What's happening, weirdos? This, believe it or not, is Keenan Thompson. I am so thrilled, not only that Keenan came on the show, uh, I've been such a huge fan of his for years and years. We talk about this in the episode, but I, I think he can make anything funny even funnier. He's just an added value performer, hilarious, and you're about to hear down to earth balanced, grounded, and a wonderful, kind, interesting, and fun human being. So I am thrilled that you are here. I'm so glad you're here, and you're here. (laughs) I just said that too many times. Uh, A couple things to plug up top. I am on tour. Next up is Denver, I believe, followed by St. Louis. Uh, I think we're going to be adding Bloomington, Indiana. All of these things are going to be on uh, PeteHolmes.com. It's going to be a wonderful little tour. And if you already came to a show, thank you so much. And if you're going to be in the Los Angeles area, I do a live show once a month here in L.A. Go to Largo-LA.com. Look for Pete Holmes Living at Largo. The next one is August 5th. They're always the highlight of my month. Always star-studded with music and comedians and myself doing a nice long set. So that's always amazing. Go to Largo-LA.com. And if you like the show, why not try a Pete's Pick? For those of you who haven't heard the show before, we do ads a little differently. We only do spots for things that I actually use and actually love. Like, for example, this that I'm holding up for the camera right now. This is my Apollo Neuro. Neuro. (laughs) N-E-U-R-O. Neuro? Yeah, neuro, like neurology. My Apollo Neuro. It's the one piece of tech a product really that has changed my life the most in the past year hands down apollo neuro is a wearable that helps your body recover from stress that sends vibrations into your body mine's on right now it's on clear and focused right now i can barely fear it feel it it's almost sub perceptual but it gives your nervous system the sensation of being touched or held it's like a virtual hug that calms your nervous system down and helps you relax sleep focus or in my case right now be more productive it's like a wearable hug for your nervous system using touch therapy to help you feel safe and in control you can wear it on the wrist you can wear it on your ankle you can even clip it on the inside of your shirt helps you with energy helps you feel more social and open clear and focused rebuild and recover which is great after workouts or after stressful interactions calm which is awesome for meditation unwind val and i call that the try and stay asleep setting and fall asleep how great is it at night i put it on well i never take it off it's on i go on my phone i hit fall asleep and it gently lulls you to sleep by introducing a rhythm and slowing it down and gently slowly your body gets the idea i'm safe and it's okay to fall asleep chemical free helps with all of these things helps uh with symptoms of adhd these uh, Apollo's effects on stress, sleep, cognitive performance, and recovery have been proven in multiple clinical trials and real-world studies. It's not woo-woo. It's clinical. It's developed by a neuroscientist and a board-certified psychiatrist who have been studying the impacts of chronic stress in humans for nearly 15 years. You can get 10% off. Support the show. Support your body. Support your mind. Go to apolloneuro.com slash weird. That's E-A-P-O. A-P-O-L-L-O-N-E-U-R-O dot com slash weird, 10% off. Seriously, give it a try. Also brought to us by our friends at Onnit and Alpha Brain. This morning, like every morning, I took some Alpha Brain. And before this episode, you're about to hear, I took some Alpha Brain. What is it? It's a nootropic, which means it's earth-grown ingredients that help your brain with memory, focus, and concentration. It's incredible for recall. It's incredible for creative work. It's incredible for conversation. It's incredible for banging out emails. It is a huge secret weapon in my repertoire when I need to get work done or do anything that involves my brain. Taking Alpha Brain, two or three Alpha Brain, 15, 20 minutes before I do it is a game changer. I wish I knew about it in college. I'm so glad I know about it now. It's been years, over six years that I haven't done stand-up, a podcast, written a script, uh, or even just gone on a date with Val or just wanted to read a book and maintain and hold on to more of it without taking Alpha Brain before. I swear by it. I give it to fans sometimes because I know I keep it in my pockets. It's so fun. It's so helpful. Game change. Go to onnit, O-N-N-I-T dot com slash weird. You will get 10% off everything you see on that landing page. That's onnit.com slash weird. 
All right, everybody, enjoy my chat with my new friend, Keenan Thompson. I can't believe it. Get into it. We came in in the carbon monoxide, I know. <laughs> Starting off with the carbon monoxide. <laughs> Let me give you the standard carbon monoxide update on what you're walking into. That's you right there. Is this a new I, I tattoo? Love, are we rolling? It is. It was what a good one. What did you do? What did you it's do? It's a house on fire and a guy going to kind of put it out by himself. It's just like a what overcome you... adversity kind of thing. Really? Yeah. When, and it's new. Yeah, yesterday. Yesterday. Yeah. We got a dude. Let me see the dude. Dude with two buckets. like. Oh, he's got a hoodie on. It looks overwhelming, but you got to do your thing anyway. Go put the fire out. Yeah, go put the fire Man, out. Man, isn't that life? That is, that is life. We got... You, I'm going to include you. Yeah. I'm assuming there are differences in our life. Uh, <laughs> I was just going to tell you you're you're more famous than I am and <laughs> you've been in a million things that I love, but I bet we're pretty similar. We are. And yet, like, 1 a.m. last night, I woke up and just kind of started thinking about all the stuff. Mm -hmm. Isn't that when it, it, like, creeps in? When you're vulnerable. Who is this when bitch? When you're vulnerable. Who is this bitch that lives in you? That goes like his guard is down and go like, now's the time. Now's the time. Remember when he's relaxed. When he's relaxed. This is this is the time to stress him out. It's the paradox of life. Life is, I mean, I guess you need it for the sake of words like irony. You know yeah, it mean? helps with those. You know. <laughs> well, but past that, it's 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 hard not to let that stuff creep in when, yeah, like you said, when your guard is down. And it feels like it's on fire for me. Yeah. If you want to freak me out, like if my brain starts whispering to me, it's usually work or finances. Even yeah. though if like... Because you're an adult now. <laughs> <laughs> you're an adult now. Yes. Welcome to your adult life. I have a daughter. Yeah, absolutely. I don't have a wife, but I, I have a wife. You know yeah. what I mean? I have my daughter in a totally different way than I have my wife. But even <laughs> if you have a wife... They're an adult as well. You know what I mean? Like well, she's the, my partner. That's what I mean. Exactly. But the daughter the, the is... The child is like... A dependent. That's a full dependent. Yeah. That's a full FD. And that and it's looking to you, you know, for all of the answers and at the moment. And for me, it's about... How old is she? She's a four and a half. She's Sweetheart. about to be... Five. Yeah, I dropped her at camp this morning. And my littlest is turning five on the 31st. No way. Yeah. Very similar age. Yep. And then my big girl's nine. She just turned nine oh, last month. Oh, my... It's the best. Little person. It's the best. Little person. The best. Because they say, not to bum you out, everyone that listens to this pod knows I'm about to say this, around seven is when their innocence sort of goes. Not They in start a to horrible, become people, yeah. They become people, yep. but it goes back to the house on fire. Yep. They get a little sense. Right now, my job, it seems, is just kind of creating a bubble. Not a, not a bad bubble. Yeah. Sometimes people say bubble in a bad way. I mean, like a safe Happy place. Look at kids' TV. Everything is high. It's and it drives Colors, us crazy. Absolutely, because we're like, this isn't real. But they don't know. Isn't that terrible? <laughs> well, we the know the Mickey house Mouse sometimes. Theme song for like the Mickey Mouse uh, hot dog, club hot thing, dog, hot diggity dog. It can drive you crazy. And it's like, are we why? talking about hot dog, hot dog, hot? We diggity are dog? hot diggity dog. Come on, come Goofy on. Be in the background, and it's just a marathon of it, and the kid loves it. Yes. And it's doing you a favor, yeah. but man. Yes. Isn't, it runs up your spine as an adult because, yeah, you're like, this isn't how the world is. Yes. But I, stay innocent. Boop. And till they say around seven, uh -huh. for you, for me, for everybody, not yeah. just your baby. Because when I talk about my daughter getting disillusioned mm -hmm. or leaving the garden or whatever you want to say, they mm -hmm. say it usually happens around seven. There's yeah. some disappointment, something shatters. There's a tear in your nylons. I don't mean literally, but like that happens and it's never the same. It's the communal of the kids. They start being around more kids, especially if they go to school. You know what I mean? Yes. They just start sharing more information at such a hyper pace. Yeah. And sharing behaviors, you know, that you don't show those kind of behaviors to your child. You know what right. I mean? Because you're always on your best behavior. Dude, if you saw what I apologized to my daughter for... <laughs> You wouldn't believe it. First of all, I've never heard my dad say I'm sorry. Uh, right. It's never happened. So you're trying to be different. I'm trying. You're Thank trying you. to move the chess it piece forward. Me. That's right. He moved it forward yeah. to give him a little credit. Uh, uh, he yeah. moved it forward. Yes. I'm moving yeah, it a another little more. That's what and you're I'm like a, a pawn. I go to. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. give myself yeah, yeah, the I go yeah, exactly. to. Exactly. <laughs> this is the future. But I just, was it this morning? You can't t say, but like this morning, 
Oh, it was last night. I was putting her to sleep. Mm -hmm. I was rocking her. I knew she was overtired, so I knew we were right on the cusp yeah. of like this could be like a a tantrum, like a like something that Any she doesn't moment. even like. Yeah. So I'm really trying to get her to be tired, and I'm rocking her, telling her a boring story. You know, yeah. in the stories, and they found a cave, and it was warm. That was a warm cave and dark. <laughs> the warm cave. You could hear droplets of water. I do that echoing in the background. <laughs> I do that. I go. Yeah. You could hear the wind. Set the set the stage, dude. It's some. It's fun for you. It's because fun. you're you're a performer, so it, that's fun for you. It is, and I'm. This isn't why I do it. I do it because it's fun for me, yeah. and I want her to be entertained. Sometimes yeah. I tell her a story so good that her eyes go wide, yeah. and she won't. And then I have to be like, and yes, that's you've when they realized. <laughs> Pull it back, back down and mellow. It was a desert, very dry. <laughs> There was nothing much to do or say because the day was done. And everybody was going night, 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 cactus. Oh, my God. You night, see night, the genius road. of oh Good Night God. Moon. The best. Good Night Moon. The best. People tease Good Night Moon. I they don't. bow down to How Good do Night Moon. Recognize. Recognize. Any, recognize any chain. That's right. If it was good enough once and it's done it. 15, 20 times, yes. it's a solid idea. That's right. Don't if people are that. ripping it off with, like, have a good one chair, yeah. like, that's because Goodnight Moon set the, st set the standard. That's right. And have that, a good one chair. That shit works. It, it settles work. the kid, especially, like, kids in cities. Yep. You know what I mean? It helps them process, like, what they've been seeing all day, especially in New York. Like, oh, you take a kid around New York around October, they might see some wild shit. We just you know what I mean? Thank you. We <laughs> took her to some Halloween parade. Yeah. I forget where we were. It wasn't New York. It wasn't L.A. Yeah. But some dude might as well have had, like, dicks <laughs> on his face just comes out and was like, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, you just gave us uh, months. And months. that's a dude playing with the energy we're talking about. Like, yes. the, the disillusionment is coming. Yeah. They will learn. Yeah. I'm going to help. Yeah. Fuck you, dude. Fuck. It's like when kids go. When Fuck parents that. Go, yes. Fuck Santa Con. Yes. Fuck. You know You're what ruining I mean? it. You're killing it. You can't You're, have 30,000 Santas. You're acting like there's no kids in the city. There's kids everywhere. A Santa pub crawl is an act of violence. And we have to explain this. Do I, dude, I took my daughter to see Santa. Two nights later, we take her to a, a thing. I didn't know there was going to be a Santa there. There was a free range Santa. <laughs> and my daughter's like, that's not the same Santa. And it's, I'm like, it's not. Oh, uh. and here we go. Um, well, Santa has a, a lot of helpers. That help him out. Yeah, and that's right. And this feel scary if they one look like him. He's scary. Yes, but he Santa approves. So <laughs> I wouldn't worry. Let's go get some food. Yeah, or you just know? try to put her to sleep. And yeah. there's a cave. And then there's, and a there's a cave. Not much happening. And Santa knows where the cave is, <laughs> so you don't have to worry about that. Sometimes I just count in the stories. I go and there's. I took ten steps. Oh my god! 10, I remember nine. Like <laughs> downloading, like the original Winnie the Pooh. Like the very original, and it the cartoon? is cartoon. No, the book, <gasps> and it is dry. <laughs> <laughs> it is Christopher Robin, oh not known God. for his anecdotes. It takes a while. To yeah, get, it takes a while to get to the bear. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. If you're not getting to poo, page two, you're learning about Christopher and his world for a while, and then poo pops in. And it, yeah, it's, it's brutal. Real slow. And we already know the dynamics. Yep. Like, it's a magical talking bear. We got it. Get to we, it. We get it. But back then, they had to be like, and you're not going to believe this. You're not going to But the bear it. could talk. Can you believe it? He opened his mouth uh -huh. and he said, Christopher. Uh -huh. Christopher was a guest Christopher. and took two steps back, <laughs> then a third, then a fourth. And then a third. <laughs> Those then eyes a third. are getting heavy. <laughs> Those eyes are getting heavy. A third, and then a fourth step back. I think stories were just written to put children to sleep until yeah. recently. Either that or entertain the writer in, in, in subtleties. Cause yeah. like, I guess like all the Disney stories are like kind of Mythic. really dark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> some, some secret. Yeah, I think princesses. they are, once you kind of, I don't want to say wake up because that makes it sound like people are asleep. Mm -hmm. I just mean once you get wise to certain themes. Yes. I was watching Copland. Uh -huh. Have you seen Copland? Absolutely. You blew it! <laughs> you blew it! I gave you a chance! You blew it! You blew it! That that scene breaks my heart. Ginormous cast in that, that movie. That cast is everyone. Crazy. That cast is like the Last Supper painting of 
American Italian actors. Yes. Keitel. It explained De Niro. The Rappaport of it all. And Rappaport? Cult it could not be more New York. He <laughs> He's a borough. Definition He's the in the borough. in the encyclopedia. <laughs> Fucking dictionary. Rappaport's picture and that's how right. he moves and runs. And what's great is you can sketch him in a dictionary, like just black and white, and that, totally, that's about what he looks like. Totally very, can. Very, and there's a pill he is, <laughs> Yeah, he represents a real, like, culture of people, like all in one person. And what I love about New York, because we were just there, New York doesn't know that they only exist there, that kind of guy. Oh, my God. Saying cunt in a deli line? Oh, it's an east, <laughs> it's a northeastern corridor thing, yeah. What but it mean? definitely doesn't transfer <laughs> Oh no, west You all. take that dude, I mean, this is what my cousin Vinny is. There's yeah. a million movies oh, yeah. that are just, it's what if one Boston, of these guys York left Brooklyn? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a migration. And, and Boston, too. Yeah. I'm from Boston. Yeah. I, it, it's, it's insane. You take, in fact, I have taken my parents and brought them to other states. Yeah, and everyone's like, hear crazy things. What is this? But if you puff <laughs> your chest out and like stand toe to toe with people, they love you for it. You know what I mean? Rappaport, the world. I'm hoping he likes my little pale riff. I'm afraid of him. I'm sure. I'm sure he will. He's just like, oh, you saw that kid? Oh, that's cool. <laughs> oh, you saw that? Oh, cool. You saw that? No, oh, I'm cool. not Bill Burr. Thank you. He's, He's Bill not. Burr. He's New York Burr. Burr's the greatest. He's that the greatest. Boston liberal voice I think I've ever heard. He's wonderful. You know, like, what a champion in the skin of the people he's talking to. You know what I mean? Agree. Just firing off about the ridiculous. Oh, he went in on Philadelphia. That I know, I was remember that. Great. I remember. I that was him. sort of what broke him. Like, a lot of us knew yeah. Bill. Yeah. I knew, I knew Bill when he was Billy Burr. Hilarious. Billy Burr. Yeah. And he used to do the black circuit. Yeah. And everyone was like, there's this guy named Bill. So I, I've told this a million, but I'm going to tell it to you. Yeah. I got real lucky when I started the people I opened with. The first one was Jim Gaffigan. Uh -huh. And the other one was Bill Burr. Incredible. This is before both of them. The, we're doing like fucking chuckle huts. James Gaffigan. Yeah, yeah. Jim. <laughs> <laughs> James Gaffigan. Yeah. Ladies and like, gentlemen. Calm down. James. Just go by Jim. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. Somebody Sean Parker's him. Lose the the Facebook. Yeah, you know? Just Jim Gaffigan. It's clean. It's clean. It's yeah. clean. You got the reference. Come on. I love it. Can you please? <laughs> you got it. And you did it. I'm just excited for friendship. Okay. okay. So I told Jim that I had just been on the road mm -hmm. with Bill Burr mm -hmm. headlining. Yeah. And look, it was just, it's just an indication of how far he's come. This is 20 years ago. Right. I go, yeah, and Bill was the headliner. And, and Jim went, Bill Burr couldn't believe that Bill was like going out on the road. He was just, I don't know what he thought he was just like a club guy or something. Yeah. Now they're both at the same caliber, which is crazy. Nobody throws out specials. Like it's nothing like Jim, like Jim is like, I know 10 specials deep or something. And they're all thorough. I know thorough is the right word. Yeah, they're thorough. Him and Jeannie, his wife. Yeah. I know I'm pretty, I don't know if he still does it. But what they used to do was they just take a topic, yeah. like hotels. And stretch it. And just look for any area. And they'd write, and you know what they do? Yeah. And this is the genius of it? Yeah. They, they treat it like a job. Treat they it treat like it like a, a writer's room. We're on, like, we're on Keenan. Because it is. Write the episode. It is. People are paying to come and see you. And yet, so many, I'm guilty. There are some bits of mine that would certainly benefit from me and Jeannie Gavigan sitting down and going, like, and let's like talk about writing this. writing it out. But our ego or whatever, or laziness, prevent. no one does it, but Jim does it. Jim will go, what's everything that's funny about McDonald's? Yeah. And when you see him working it out, yeah. 50, 60, 75 jokes, and 20 of them, I'd say this if he was right here, he knows, 20 yeah. of them, zero, nothing. Right. Just didn't didn't connect. But those 30. 60, that's still, yeah, that's yeah. 30 great ones, and then like 10, eh, that maybe need work. Yeah. Fucking figured it out. That's wild. He, that's a lot of fishing. He you know what I mean? fished his way. Seinfeld's the same way. There are a lot of these guys that are just like, what if you treated it serious? Instead of For just sure. like cocaine. Dude. I mean, look at Judd. Yeah. Judd Hyper too. serious about it. And it's funny, the term, when I say nerd, I, I, I don't mean that as a derogatory term. I'm just like, yeah. we nerded it out. I did yeah. too. You have to. Broke I mean, it down. Even on the black side, like look at Dave. You know what I mean? Like. That's what I think is real thinkers over there. For real. Yeah. 
And Dave, when you see him, look, Dave could come in here and riff on this room and it would be worthy of a new special. Like, he's that talented. He's incredible. He would get every... Well, he's just knowledge, so he would grab the reference material right. and then go into the era. He'd also understand the implications of it. You know what I mean? Like, he yeah. would un he'd understand, like, the history of it. Like oh, that. I, that's what I'm saying. So I'm giving him full genius card. Yeah. And I'm saying every genius also just sometimes sits down and nerds out, meaning like he sweats and he works and he mm -hmm. listens and he mm -hmm. edits. He might be doing a lot of it on the fly, mm -hmm. but there's efforting happening yeah. to look that casual. Like oh, I, yeah. I don't care who you are. Oh yeah, he has a like a room he likes to work out in in San Francisco. Like I was randomly up there shooting a, a old Navy commercial. Yeah, yeah, and I saw like one of his boys at the hotel like he came up to me in the elevator and he was like and i saw the c on his on his chain and i was like b before i could even say he was like yeah I'm, I'm here with dave or whatever he's here too blah 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 i'm like what san francisco like why he was like he's doing the punchline and right. i'm like where never you know what i mean because i'm not a stand-up i was like where is that never heard of it took me a while to find it <laughs> yeah no it's a little room it was tucked away yeah. like you gotta go up and wrap around and like all this i was lost a for a minute but I went in and he went up and I was kicking it with him like before or something. And then he went up and he was just up there like shit talking for a couple of hours. You yeah. Know? And he was just working out shit. Right. Or being in the moment. And if something funny pops up, we'll, you know, put that in the bag kind of thing. Right. Right. And that was interesting, you know, because usually you see him in his radio city and it's all like ready, ready. Right. Kind of shit. But even when I, I saw him at Radio City and Chris I was Rock like. Too. He was it. What do you want? Hyper writer, hyper thinker. Right. You know. That's what I see. My example is always rappers, which are the coolest dudes in the world. Yeah. And I'm like, yep. And they're sitting down and going like, what rhymes with skibbity boop? You know what I mean? Like, yep. and, and that's and not what not, also means something special to everyone listening. Yes. You know what I mean? I was thinking about I Donald Glover. You know how we all start going, yup. Yeah. Yup. Yeah. yeah. Somebody workshop that. Yep. I don't give a fuck. Yep. I know it looks like Donald just took his shirt off and got sexy and went, yo, yeah, maybe. But mm. to get to, yo, yeah, we had, yeah, like just we shit. Had all of it. Brah, be. Yes. 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 Yeah. 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 Little John. Yeah. 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 And a lot Usher. of these are taken. You know? So, so he'd be like, I like that. And they go, that's, that's little John. That's little John. That's, that's, that's little John. That's little John. That's what Oh, okay. What about yes? All of Britain. Yeah. Yeah. Can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yo. Yeah. That you can have that one. Good. I. I mean. I even see it. Then it bleeds into culture. Like I take a Peloton class, mm -hmm. and they start going. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Or like I can't think of what it is, but it's not yeah. But like they're so popular, you don't realize that at some point it was some dude. Taking a chance. Oh, yeah. I was just hanging out with these uh, two young ladies. My friends have a daughter mm -hmm. who's 12, and she had a friend who was 12. Mm -hmm. I was hanging out with them. And you know that age. I remember that age. It's yeah. hard. Oh, absolutely. 12, and, was that seventh grade? 12 is brutal. Super hard, yeah. And everything is what you like and what you don't like, mm -hmm. and it's terrifying to take a chance. Mm -hmm. So I'm there. I'm making corny jokes mm -hmm. constantly. <laughs> and they're going, like, rolling their eyes and making mm -hmm. fun of me. And I, I wasn't trying to teach him or anything, but I was just like, you guys are riff killers. You know that? Like you're, and, and I was like, I'm out here taking a chance. I, I, I take it Don't back. Deflate I was sales, to teach Don't I was deflate to teach my sales, man. Don't deflate my sales, man. I'm an idea that, guy. I'm an idea guy. I Takes thrive. a lot of bad jokes to you get know? to that good one. And then you, you know what? Find it. Keen, when I would make them laugh, I'd go, we don't get to that one without those other ones you made fun of. You know what? You... <laughs> just being rough with them. Seriously. But yeah. I think a good analogy of that is like the gold rush. You hear people are getting gold over there. Yeah. And you're going to go there and just sit there. Yeah. Like dig through and find some shit dig. for yourself. And don't be embarrassed when it turns out to be fool's gold or it's just a hunk of shit. It you doesn't know, matter. Keep that's digging. What that's what I'm trying to say. That's yeah. what we're both saying. Chappelle, it doesn't matter. Kendrick Lamar, it doesn't matter. Yeah. They're all writing dumb shit. They're all trying dumb shit. Mm -hmm. Childish Gambino made some dumb sounds. Yep. That's what his job is, is to work through the embarrassment. What I mean, so take something like, I know people probably ask you about what's up with that all the time. Mm. You could be like, that's dumb. You know what I mean? That's it a is, risk. You pitch that in the room, yeah. but, but it's, it's the right silly. kind of silly. I, it's the silly I thrive on. The sillier, the better. 
yeah. then, yeah, you hand it over to smart people to make it smart enough for the silly to play, I guess. You know what I mean? Right. Saying? Put enough nutrition on it so it's not yeah, it, just... Exactly. Yeah. You know, grounded in reality. You know, Lauren hates that shit where it's just like unicorns and like whatever. It has to be grounded in reality some sort of way, right? <laughs> What so I, you yes. can see unicorns if you do acid, but you have to like put that in there. Right, you know? right. It can't just be like cotton candy thoughts or whatever. But I tend to wander in the cotton candy world, just happiness, <laughs> sugar factory, what makes me tickle, you know what I mean? Yes. Like that kind of stuff. Yes. And it was a simple idea of having a talk show and not letting people talk. That made right. me laugh, you right. know what I mean? Right. And then, we massage it on that. The same with Scared Straight. I just wanted to, like, yell at people, basically, and they had to take it. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. I mean, it's a simple idea, but there is something true. I, look, I don't want to ruin it. We can't ruin it. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, how much of the show is about the host? You know what I mean? Like, that not that kind of at the, at the heart opinion, of it? It's like, I'm, yes. this is my show. In my opinion, if you want to do well at that show, it's all about the host. Right. Yeah. It's their week, you That's know what right. I mean? And you figure out how to help them have a good show, they're going to remember you for that. That's right. That's like, right. It's not about, can I get a character that the world loves? You know, that's what is the obvious eventuality. You know oh, what I mean? Oh, oh, this is interesting. I was saying talk shows are all about the host. You're saying SNL is all about oh, the host. Oh, yeah, that's what I thought you were talking about, yeah. No, no, you you, you went to talk an even more Talk shows for sure, yeah. Yeah, and that to me is kind yeah. of the heart. Donahue? Yeah. Come on. That's the Donahue show. It's called yeah. Donahue. He yeah. points at the name anytime people forget. The and Donahue he said in the stage, he's like, I'm allowing these people to talk. I may disagree or whatever, That's but right. I'm allowing them on my show. Right, right. Yeah. And what's up with that to me is saying, like, let's be honest, this guy doesn't care. Oh, for He sure. just wants to be silly or Absolutely. to have fun. It's his show. It's and not about talking. It's not. And that's <laughs> what I mean. Like, this is what I mean when I say let's not ruin it by yeah. going too deep. I'm just saying... I don't think it would be as funny if we didn't know it's his show. Mm -hmm. He's asking a question, mm -hmm. and then he doesn't listen. Yes, it's it's totally different. Those. If yeah. the guest was like, and stands up and sings, "Where's right. the violation?" Right. It's not. It's not. It's not a joke anymore. Right. The host won't let the guest. Yes. <laughs> you. They. It's they're not in on the party. They can't be, and it has to be his party. In fact, you could do and the same joke with a with a party. Yeah, a thousand percent. Yeah. <laughs> this is my party, and I don't want anybody to dance. It's I'm Kendall Roy. To dance. Yeah. Kendall Roy is like, I'm going to be lowered on a crucifix and do a weird rap at my party. It's, yeah. it's similar. So that's what I'm saying is these people that don't know what to do with their power. Mm -hmm. It's like a parody mm -hmm. of power. It's a parody mm -hmm. of ego. It definitely is. Yeah. It is ego to, like, to, to wear that outfit or that <laughs> hair. You know what I mean? It's all ego. And... She's super into it, you know what I mean? <laughs> and it's wild because it's infectious, and I don't know, it's just a, a circus. It be, you know, it's a fun circus for us. Yeah. Because we don't have to write, you know, snappy dialogue no. kind of stuff. You know but what it's, I mean? It's just the tip of the iceberg, and then we get right back to the party kind of thing. And we're dying. Yeah. I want you to know we're dying. Nothing better than the cutbacks to, like, those hosts sitting there like, what, what's you happening? You could do it all the day. Best. You could do it. And then this is why writing is important. Shout out to a strike. That Lindsey Buckingham joke is my favorite joke of the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. My absolute favorite. He doesn't talk. Number one, Bill sat there for years. Yeah. Never spoke a word. Yeah. But still got huge laughs every single time. And it was the button of a sketch. I can't believe Set it. Set it up hard in the beginning. It never. My man is here. It never doesn't work. Definitely got something to say. We're going to get to that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. The it, best. Okay. Has any guest ever done it and you got the strong sense that they didn't understand what was happening? Like, I remember when Morgan Freeman did it and I was watching and I was like, I, no disrespect to Morgan Freeman. <laughs> I'm just like, does he get this? Or is he like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> A little bit of both. <laughs> Kind of, I want to say, but he's done so much. I think he's just kind yeah. of just like whatever. -ish, you this know is no saying? different like, from anything. Yeah, like I don't know if he came there to do that necessarily. I think he was coming there, and then they asked him to do something, or maybe they brought him in for that. I don't know. I think he was around New York, and then they like asked a favor right. or something like right. that. Right, because we didn't write. Oh, we want Morgan Freeman in this. Thing. You know what I mean? Right, it just right, so right, right. To be right. 
He's passing. And through. then I had to go explain it to him. And yeah, he was definitely dismissive. He was like, yeah, yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs> whatever. I was like, just sit there and watch it. Yeah, I'll okay, sit good. there yeah. and do what Not I like do. I have a choice. Like, <laughs> really? You're Morgan Freeman. You don't have a choice? I mean, well, okay. Bye. Nice meeting you. Enjoy the show. I remember. But Ernest Borgnine yeah. had no idea what was going on, but couldn't have been happier. Yeah. Just sitting there smiling. I remember this. Loving life and yeah. just so not down waiting for to someone to tell it. him. Didn't matter. Yeah. He was just loving it. Yeah. What a sweetheart. I think once you get to that iconic status, somebody at SNL told me the story where John Malkovich, John Malkovich mm -hmm. referred to the movie being John Malkovich as that weird one with my name in the title. <laughs> he couldn't remember the word being and his name. You know what I mean? Like that's wild. Meaning, like, so Morgan Freeman's just going around being Morgan Freeman yeah, all day. Exactly. And part of it, he was sitting there and you were dancing. I don't think we can even touch how absurd these people's realities are. Yeah, that and like there are certain people that are kind of distant from, you know, the celebration of them. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, I want to say like Philip Seymour or even myself or you know, I would. It sounds like John Malkovich is like that, where it's just like off putting. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, to so have it's it a buffer. all be about him. I see. So he just wants to be great at his work. And, and he's protecting himself. That. Yeah, or it makes it awkward. Like, I don't necessarily love being, you know, the sitcom dean. And I didn't love that. You know what right, I mean? Like, right. they just grabbed my first name and just made it all about that. Like, oh, interesting. it was called Saving Henry at first or some just normal shit. Right. And then they were like, no, we just want to call it your name, blah, blah, blah. Like, well, I'm not going to fight you about it, but <laughs> it's a lot. You know what I mean? Like, Keenan hoodies and like all yeah, kinds of, like, yeah. you know, like it's, you know, it's a lot. I can't even wear it. Well, I was just, I called my friend. Maybe you know Andrew Santino. He's a hilarious comic. And oh, we were talking. Kidding? Isn't he great? Incredible. He's Should incredible. That cheeseburger special was great. I'm so, I love I was you just love doing the shelves this this morning because I threw a straw in the trash. <laughs> Show me the shelves. Saying it coming out the door. Show me the shelves as I'm grabbing my keys to myself. I swear to God. That was two hours ago. <laughs> no way. Show me the shelves. Wow. Wow. Great. Yeah. So we were talking about all those stories about the devil yeah. and you're at a crossroads or whatever, or he teaches you to play the fiddle, but he wants your soul. Uh -huh. And I was like, we have this conversation, he and I probably three times a year. It always comes back to the devil teaching you to play the, the fiddle. Yeah. Cause we see it. People that believe their own hype, mm -hmm. that take themselves too seriously. Mm -hmm. You overload them with money and with money comes power. Yep. And then they start and the other, not just that one, we all go, they become Gollum, uh, Lord of the Rings. Power corrupts. Yeah. Always. Always, and it doesn't matter. So few. I'm happy to hear you say that you have given this some thought. Mm -hmm. You have a little membrane membrane around you that goes like, let's not start believing that because it's gonna eat up your life. Oh yeah, but I've always kind of been like that. You know what I mean? I'm definitely. I, I say I'm ensemble minded a lot, but it's like little brother syndrome. You know what I mean? Just like not necessarily the leader of the pack, but you know, would love to be an MVP. Like I want to be a solid player, yeah. basically, but. I don't need the light shined on me, like right, not at all. Scotty Pippen, Scotty Pippen, <laughs> but he's just he's losing his mind right now. I don't know, is he? Yeah, yeah, he's just saying all kind of wild shit. Like oh, okay. Jordan was a bad player in the beginning and all kind of shit. Like, really, everybody was, you know. And then he got really bad. But it's hard for me to believe by the time they met each other, Jordan was a bad player. I don't think so. I don't think so either. Yeah. That that does fill in nicely. I always go to Jordan, but it always goes. He was dorking it out. He was. Drip, bouncing a ball and yeah. shooting a free throw 700 times is Bill Gates shit. Oh, yeah. That's like learning to code. Oh, exactly. And then we all make it like, he must get so many girls or whatever. <laughs> and I'm like, he fucking dorked it up. Yeah. Who taught you? So you said a little brother syndrome. I hear that. Mm -hmm. Did someone kind of model that for you? That Like, look, you'll go nuts if you believe this or you'll lose your center? No, no one ever, like, put it directly necessarily it's just you know growing up with respect you know like not super strict parents but like my parents were strict you know and yeah growing up in the church and like kind of being the only one in my entire family to be semi-famous like my brother is like doing a lot of work now but we started out doing a lot of theater together mm. and then you know he's four years older so he ended up going to high, you know high school and college before he got into like you know actually booking shit you know what i mean and mm -hmm. then i started booking shit out of atlanta at like 14 15 you know and right. like i kind of was just in it young and he's circled back around to it now 
But for a long time, it was me and, like, my other entire side of the family that are in Virginia are just normal people. And there's mm-hmm. hundreds of them. You know what I mean? Right. right. And it's just like, who am I to, like... <laughs> there's hundreds of them. Yeah. Go back to the same basements with a new attitude, you know? Like, right. I, I got, I'm, I'm already an established who I am kind of thing. Right. So. That's interesting. So there's that Jay-Z quote where he goes, people say you've changed. And he mm-hmm. goes, hell yeah, I've changed. You think I did all that work to stay the same? <laughs> Right. So that's yeah. the other side of it. Yeah. But I hear you, you've, you've certainly changed and grown from that kid in the basement yes. with your buddies, but you can still maintain and go back and still. Yeah. I never, take I never lost myself in the, in the search for, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or the achievement of even, you know, like I enjoy being normal and coming to, you know, new adventures yeah. alone, you know yeah. what I mean? Because right. I'm a fan of people and like, Right. I am just, you know, an adult that can survive. You know what I mean? I don't need an entourage or an assistant to do right. everything for me. Like, I have them, but we, I don't we need them. We pan over to the uh, you know, publicist couch to and show them. And the, the sleeping and we little got the, No, that is your publicist. It's classic, yeah. <laughs> a, it was a long night last night. Uh, <laughs> a lot of phone calls. Yeah. A lot of phone calls. A whole lot going on. I think that's amazing. <laughs> it's yeah. incredible. Let me, and I'm glad. Let me ask you, Santino and I, I was talking about you. This is a nice thing. I was like, you're like, uh, you just said you don't want to be othered. So I'm not trying to make you uncomfortable, but I, I think you're like an iconic cast Thank member. Thank you. And I think this is even better than being an icon. You say MVP. I'm just like, who's funnier? Like, I've seen you in sketches with one line and not to put down the sketch, but I'm like, that was the best laugh. That, yeah. that was the best laugh with some face or some moment. And you're always staying in touch with the silliness of it. Mm-hmm. And you talk about starting in theater with your brother, yeah. the sort of like school play of it. Yeah. Like you don't have like an SNL gear that you're getting in and getting tight. You're staying mm-hmm. loose and, and being silly and having fun. Yeah, trying to stay in the moment. Stay in the moment. Yeah. Do that sketch yeah. and do that line. Yeah. And also, nobody likes someone who's trying to get laughs. No. But you're like, I know how to get laughs and I'm going to go get them. But you're not embarrassed to go get him. That's not that's it's not a lot of layers to cut yeah, through. Yeah, you know? Tell me. And it takes it takes time, which is kind of unfair for some people. They don't get a chance to like get that time to break through that bubble at whatever you know emergence point it is, season two, three, four, you know what I mean? Whatever idea that gives them the confidence to kind of do whatever. Some people come in with that confidence. Yep. You know, but a it's lot rare. of people kind of get the job because they're still on the on the rise of, you know, whatever, and people are pointing them out as, you know, that person has potential, that person has potential, whatever. But, you know, potential isn't right, you know, a good enough shield sometimes, you know what I mean, to, like, let you just fly off the handles even if shit is going wrong or some shit like right, that. Right, And earning that respect of the audience, earning that respect of the show, the producers, the crew, it's a, it's a, it's a lot. Yeah, yeah. And it, you know, for me, it took a long time, and like that's why I like being in an ensemble, so I can kind of figure it out mm. from the back, as opposed to like being right up front. But see, and brilliant. just being judged for everything. Yeah. So by the time I got up front, I was ready. You know what I mean? Mm. I was ready for you know whoever's questions or judgments kind of thing, and. I, I'm very lucky for that. You know what I mean? Like, I think I'm very lucky that I was able to perform others' ideas until mine were mature enough to be there. What you're saying, I think, I sound like an old person, but I'm just like, I just feel like that voice is missing. We don't mm-hmm. have enough people saying that. Like, hang back. Yeah. It's and it's, it's what, tough because everything is like... Yes. Yeah. And it's all about me. Do you remember in Inside Lewin Davis, he goes, you don't release your early shit, it ruins the mystique? Wow. Do you remember that? No. It's crazy. They're finding his old records, and he's like, how come I haven't heard this? He goes, you don't release your early, it's the same thing I just said. But like, people are running to the front, and either you get to the front and you don't know what to do, and you explode or implode. Yep. But nobody's saying like... Take the time and train. What's the rush? And also anonymity is is power. That's what Dimitri yeah. Martin said to me when I was starting. He was like, mm. I know I know you want to be famous, but right now you can move in any direction and no one's going to go, what are you doing? Right. You can you could go up and totally change your style yeah. and no one would mind. So you had the the wisdom to to hang back a little bit and get ready. By the way, uh Will Farrell too. He did his career slow. I know mm-hmm. it doesn't seem that way. Yeah. But old school, he killed it as a supporting actor, as Big an ensemble. Time. Kill it. 
destroyed it. it. Don't just, I'm sure. Steal it, yes. Will's never done the show. Steal it. Yeah. Steal it. I'm sure he got offered leading roles in other movies. But it I'm goes sure. back to training, and I remember being in theater and us, like, rehearsing, you know, just for the director, basically, like, the first time him being up in the audience and seeing the formations or whatever. And I remember him calling out people that were, like, in the moment giving to the scene, whether you had lines or not, and he would call them out, like, I see you working, I see you, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And it was such a feeling of achievement to have your name called out for being noticed, for being in the background, for doing, you know, a committed, you know, performance that was just for the sake of the, yes. you know, the piece. It wasn't self-seeking behavior. At all. It and wasn't like, how can I steal that this? I think needs to be taught, you know, because yeah. it is, it's satisfying for the team to win, you yeah. know, it really is. Right. And I don't know, I'm, 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 you know, I'm happy that I'm a, a, the kind of person that allowed myself to, yeah, stumble. I, like, I didn't come in not with an ego, you know what I mean? And I yeah. didn't come in not trying shit that I thought was funny and, like, you know, <laughs> had the train wreck of, you know, seeing the fact that it wasn't at all. What was one of those? Oh, man, I wrote something with, like, a Pink <laughs> Floyd song in it, like the Money song, but, like, was trying to sing it. But, like, it's one of the hardest cadences because it's in, like, 3-3 three, three time or something. Like, it is... Not Money. an easy thing, yeah. yeah. It was just a famous song that I yeah. thought, yeah, everybody, you know, knows this song or whatever, but try to recreate it at the table and give parts to other people and have them with, like, <laughs> two seconds of rehearsal before the table read. Man, that shit tanked hard. <laughs> I remember, like, writing that shit all night and being happy about it. Like, yeah, this is going to kill. Right. You know what I mean? And then we're going to sing the song, and the song, it's going to be perfect, not knowing that. Little things can tank your sketch, you know what I mean? Right. So. Well, there's a difference, and, and one of the things I think we all have to figure out, the discernment between your mania, like you're in a moment. Yeah. Sometimes I look at my set list, and I'm like, I can make anything funny. Mm -hmm. That's a dangerous place. It's much better to go, I don't know if any of this is funny. It is, yeah. and it's, it. you know, and it makes me happy that it makes me feel weird when people say, you can make anything funny. You can take any line and make it funny. Because, like, I know that's not true. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, like, that's right. It's that's right. maybe that's the illusion. high percentage true, yes. That's the illusion. But I can't just be like, you know what? You're absolutely right. Let me just <laughs> read this emergency exit plan. Yeah. Speaking of, what is it with accents? I'm sorry. We're going to take a, a turn left because Sidebar. Daniel Radcliffe hosted, and, you know, he's Captain British. But, he, yeah. you know, they do the American accent very well. Yeah. And then he hops back to the English. Yeah. So I had him like read like the emergency ex exit plan just as an American. And he was just like, yeah, this, that, and that. And then he just went back to being his British self. I'm like, I don't, which one are you, <laughs> are you acting? You know what I mean? Are you acting it's the like British Christian one? Bale. Yeah. You know when Christian Bale does press it's and he's still crazy. talking in the accent of the movie? It's crazy. I'm like. Idris Elba. I'm like, what? I have a whole, I used to have a bit about this where I was like, actors are sociopaths. Yeah. Of course, I'm joking. Yeah. But I'm like, if there was someone in your office who would cry on command, you found out that wasn't their real voice, <laughs> everything they ever told you was a lie, yeah. you'd be like, Kathy's a fucking insane like, person. Insane, and we need to fucking but tell if, somebody. But if you film it, they're like, yeah. and the award goes to, and yeah. it's like, these are our tuxedo, royalty. Tuxedo limousine. Can I put this to you too? Yeah. Nothing makes me laugh harder than Brad Pitt pretending to be a pharmacist and they give him 50 million and then pharmacists go and watch it and cry and go that's us that's, that's us i'm like that's dude, why he's he, brilliant he stooped to pretend to be like counting pills mm -hmm. with the little metal thing make it real and instead of them being like this sucks he's doing what I, he's doing what i do and I, they're crying yeah they love it. it they love it because he makes it real. He doesn't know, approach it, it as Brad Pitt anymore. You right. know, he's Jeff. He disappeared. Jeff Soderbergh or whatever. Yeah. One of yeah. us. Yeah, no, that's one of true. Us. Yeah. That's true. So I love what you said about you can't make any, anything funny, Daniel Radcliffe. Yeah. It's meant to. You have yeah. to put your legs, your head between your knees. Yeah, I'm like, who's a real? You have to put your head, head between, between your knees. You know what I'm saying? It gives you the chills. It's crazy. I'm telling you, writing. It's insane. You're sitting yeah. talking to yourself. And then he walks in. Yeah. And he goes, hey, daddy-o. And which will be perfect because if he, he says daddy-o. you have like, to do that because it's like you're trying to create yeah. a scene that doesn't exist. But that's what I'm saying. So you know 
when someone says you can make anything funny, yeah. you're like, dude, I'm me all day. And I remember the Pink Floyd money sketch. Like, you yeah. don't see it. Yeah. And then part of the illusion, like how many times, going back to Jordan, did he lay up a brick alone and was like, I'm so glad nobody saw that? Or an air ball. Are you kidding? You think he didn't shoot air balls at, the, at his prime? He and shot just be air like, balls. How did that happen? That's right. Like, Here we go to classic Jordan. Whoa, that is way off. In fact, I want a montage of Jordan Airballs just in missing, his career. Just bricking. Bricking. You'd be shocked. Oh, here we go. Fade away. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was over the backboard. All right, pull it back a little bit. Got it. You got to learn. Over the backboard airball. <laughs> it went into the crowd. Okay. Jordan for I guess three. that was a little strong. Yes. It, this, but this becomes, and you know, take your pick. De Niro has done movies, or whoever you like, has done movies where he did a take and it was fucking dumb. Mm -hmm. It was dumb. Yep. I'm saying he's one of the greats. Yeah. That's why he's one of the greats. And this is what I was trying to tell these two 12 year olds. Yeah. It's like, you just see the finished product. You just see Billie Eilish always being cool. Like, what do you want from me? That's, that was her and her brother being like, Zipapoodoo. Is that <laughs> something? Is that, that, that's something, right? Zipapoodoo. And their parents are just like, I, no, that is nothing. She's played a track for her manager and she loved it. And it was like, mm, but also people mm, don't even, <laughs> bad. They don't even harp on the fact that people only post the most perfect thing. Right. You know what I mean? They cut it, they edit it, they do this, that, and the other, and they, they throw up, you know, their best thing ever. Yeah. They don't they don't throw up the ramp up. Nope. You know what I mean? And the, the journey is probably even funnier, you know? So much like funnier. as a comic, does not does it not elate you when a joke bombs? Because it's like, well, this is exciting because I was expecting it to go this way. That's right. But you're telling me it's gone that way. Well, so what happened? That's the attitude. Right. If you're curious and yeah. present, yeah. to use your word, and you're just going like now the joke is right. that I thought you would laugh at that. <laughs> exactly. Like, there's still a joke happening. Absolutely. Like, I did a show where it was just a hell gig, and I just started, like, kind of turning on the crowd and, and, and talking about how much pain I was in, uh -huh. and I'm sweating, and I want to die, and fuck mm -hmm. you, and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I was like, that's the show. Right. Whatever the show is, if the show sucks so much that you're entertained and delighted, yeah. then that was the show. Yeah. That was the move. That's being in the moment. That's what That's what it is, instead of pretending like, like you're killing. <laughs> I understand, like, having your arsenal, you know what I mean, and throwing it out for the sake of, I know these things go well, so if I'm performing for a show, this is the show, you know what I mean? Yeah. But at the same time, it's so exciting to discover. That's you right. You know, and like, it's crazy. And it's the arsenal that emboldens you to try to discover. Yes. I remember, so going back to those, Very well those dates when I, thank you, when I opened for Burr, I had a set where I ate shit, yeah. absolute shit. Yeah. And I, you know, he wasn't Bill Burr, but to mm. me he was. Right. I was like, you're fucking incredible. Yeah. What do you do? You tell a joke. And back then, my jokes were so corny. They were all about road signs. They were all about, like, things I read on ice packs. Uh -huh. Here's one. I go, I was reading on an ice pack. That's the setup. <laughs> Come on. It said, a bittering agent has been added to the contents to discourage consumption. Oh, man. Tell me if I'm not a Seinfeld fan. I go, of words. <laughs> I know. And I go, I love that. Because apparently, pause, before, pause, the ice packs were too delicious. Now... <laughs> We can appreciate that because that's just a bad early joke. The crowd, <laughs> the crowd gives it zero, as they should. Which is funny because if I did it now, they would probably laugh just because I found my fans. I found people that like silly stuff like that. Yeah. But I'm in a bar. Yeah. In Peoria, Illinois, it's like yeah. a truck bar. Yeah. It's not gonna work. Yeah. And I said to Bill, I go, "What do I do?" And he goes, "He goes, just be honest. Be like, well, that sucked." Mm -hmm. And I tried it. Because I had plenty of shows to bomb at. Right. Next time I do it, I go, the ice packs were too delicious. Mm. No one laughs. I go, well, that sucked. No one even laughs at me calling it out. Uh -huh. Or maybe they did. Uh -huh. And then I had nothing to follow it with. Right. So then I'm like, I read this on some canned corn. <laughs> like, I'm just like. <laughs> like, I realized I didn't have the arsenal. That might be one of my favorite characters ever, the comic <laughs> that bombs, calls it out. And then just moves on, bombs, and calls it. And he's just still bombing and calling it out the entire time. Just bad joke. And, well, that sucked. 
<laughs> that's his tag, like hamburger. Hamburger. And oh I'm not going to have it. Well, that sucked. Well, that. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Hilarious. Well, that sucked. Hilarious. I go, what kind of an abbreviation for robot is robo? <laughs> you really saving any time dropping that T? Hey, robot cop, the bad guy's over there. Oh, they got away. I spent too long saying your name. And then, well, that sucked. I saw a road sign on the way here. It said, caution, falling rocks. It, like, had me in literal tears right now. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, that sucked. <laughs> Bill's in the back like, no, it's not what I meant. <laughs> That's not what I meant. He didn't mean call that. call it out once. He, he meant, and then he meant. So good. You know what he meant? Mm. Be funny. Yeah. Don't do comedy. Be funny. Yeah. Like, interesting. Just be in the moment. Yeah. But I wasn't good enough. This is you and your hanging back years. Mm -hmm. You're cultivating your skill. You'd already mm -hmm. done a bunch of stuff, mm -hmm. but you're learning. Like when I say steal it, I don't mean material. I mean like steal some of that wisdom. Yeah. Some of that sure footedness yeah. that will help you. They want you to steal it because they stole it. Right. Chappelle got it from somewhere. You know what I mean? For sure. I'm not saying he didn't. Burr got it from somewhere. Yeah. And that's okay. That's okay. That's what we're doing. We're all passing it forward. For sure. See what you do with it. See what you do with it. For sure. Here's what I said to Santino that I didn't know. I, we were talking about it, and I kind of know your answer already because you're ensemble minded and you're grounded and you're centered and you're grateful. And it's incredible. I'm so happy. I'm so happy to see that you're this way. But we were like, I was talking about how great you are. I won't say everything I said, but just how great you are, how hilarious you are. Nobody makes me laugh harder on that show. You're the king. Oh, and I go, right? And then I go, is he overrated, underrated? I go, is he underrated? We mm -hmm. just had a little chat. Yeah. And we were like, it's the old Chris Rock thing. He goes, do you mm -hmm. think, this is not my words, I love Jay, Jay Moore, but Chris Rock said, if I was as funny as Jay Moore, would I be on this show? It was kind of one of the meaner things he said. For sure. I don't know if you remember that. Cuts, that cuts that. deep, yeah. It cuts deep, and, it, and again, JJ, love you, pal. Jay's pretty damn funny. Jay's so great. That's a little unfair, yeah. I agree. Yeah. I agree. But he was sort of, I think he was hinting at like black people don't blow up in the It same wasn't way. about Jay. Yeah. It was about race. And that was Santino and I, just two white guys figuring out race relations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, does do you feel underrated? And do you think if like, is that a is there truth to that? Like, why isn't it cover of Rolling Stone consistent Keenan-ness? Or do you uh, not care? I mean, yeah, I've had those thoughts. You know what I mean? Like, it's definitely been an interesting position to see people, like, come, rise, and leave. You know what I mean? Come, rise, and leave, and come, rise, and leave. And, like, like, like when they're station. rising, it is a whirlwind of, like, yeah, covers, movies, you know, this, that, and the other. And then to be there. And, like, I, I mean, I've had my versions of that whenever, you know, those moments of a you know a movie I might be starring in pop up, you know what I mean? So I never overly focused on it. But I have had those thoughts where I would see like the top one hundred SNL performer like book and then whose picture is on the cover. You know what I mean? And like what size they are. And then I'm like, mm. Mm, interesting. Mm. And then if I see if I make the cover and it's a small picture, I'm like just like, well, work harder or, you know, be more legendary or whatever. And like I kind of try to use it as incentive as opposed to like you know, they're leaving me out of the conversation and, like, I have a chip on my shoulder about that. Like, right. I think once you get chips on your shoulder, that's a, a dangerous kind of beginning to a spiral. Right. You know, of because course. you just start being defensive about everything or you just start being, you know, kind of paranoid about shit right. or overthinking shit. So I And don't losing your footing, kind of like It's that. stressful enough. Right. Mm. And you are doing incredible... And it's just a very strange fishbowl to be in. Oh, yeah. To have a new fish come in. I'm just saying back to you what you just said to me. And they blow up and you're like, so you were just, you just, I feel the same way about stand-up, to be honest. Like some, some people sure. just swing into stand-up. Yep. For some reason, they explode. explode selling a million tickets. And I'm like, we, and by the way, I'm, I'm just joining you. I'm also incredibly grateful. You're incredibly grateful. But there are moments where you're like, I don't understand. Like, yeah. I'm taking this real serious. Real serious. <laughs> and dedication matters. Yeah. You know? And it's um, got to be frustrating, especially the people that kind of But, aren't... you know, our world is, you know, it can be shallow. You know what I mean? At times. Sometimes it just comes down to 
you know, the woos and screams, you know what I mean? And right. if you're getting enough woos and screams for, you know, how you look even or something like that, or, right. Right. you know, the fact that you are a new fish as opposed to somebody that's been there and been, you know, woos dependable or whatever, you know? Can woos I and tell screams. you how much I resent woos and screams? Oh, my I'm not God. not a woo and a scream. It's not, not because it, it launches people in a direction, but it doesn't necessarily allow them to time to develop. Yeah. So I think Harry Styles was lucky, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. he's lucky that he was dedicated enough and such a good person enough to actually pursue his craft while that rocket ship was happening. That's right. You know what I mean? And he kind of surround himself with people that took it real serious and were, you know, talented in their own kind of He didn't believe the woos and screams, or he didn't let it stop at woos and screams, because he could have. Well, he just didn't let it detach him from himself. You know, some people let those woos and screams just, you know, it's like a lazy river. Just, okay, take me into my future. You know right, what I mean? Tell right. me what to do because everything comes to you all of a sudden. Right. Free meals, free flights, free women, free this, free that, free drugs, free men, if you want, you know, whatever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then all of a sudden, you're just out, the, you're at the end of the river and now you're out in the lake by yourself. And like everybody's like well, nobody... back there, you know, floating down the next one, you know? Okay. So I wanted to say this to you earlier. I'm glad it came back because I think you, maybe you've already heard it. But they say if you want to go fast, go alone. Mm -hmm. If you want to go far, go together. Yep. And Santino also, and we were just talking about this, it's like you want to blow up real fast. It's Daniel Day-Lewis and There Will Be Blood. It's like you end up in a mansion alone. Mm -hmm. you, that wasn't woos and screams. But it's like they'll also, those same woos and screams, they're all going to get kids. Yep. And wives and houses or partners and houses, and they're not going to go out and, and like you, now. Then it becomes like nobody's wooing and screaming anymore. Yes. You didn't establish a relationship of like craftsmanship or like yeah. trust. Yep. And then, and this fucking sucks when I see, especially in Hollywood, how people like refuse to get old, like they can't, because that's what they are, and that is corrosive and toxic. To your soul. Like, I'm going to say soul. Like, if you think your worth is that you can turn around and people will woo at your ass or, like, lift up your shirt and show your abs and that's your worth, what happens, Keenan, when it goes away? Like, this is the oldest story in the book. It's the oldest story in the book, and nobody learns the lesson unless they have people around them to remind them of the lesson. It's hard for you to be in the middle of it and just assume one day it's going to end. You know, you just think the trajectory is just going to keep going because yep. it's going so hard. Yep. And like every other day, there's an incredible phone call. You yep. know what I mean? Or yep. sometimes when you walk outside, I'm people literally lose black their church. shit. I'm literally you know? black churching you right yeah. now. I'm black churching like, you. This, know, is this is church. It's wild. And, you know, my heart goes out to them because... A lot of the times they are good people and then they get put. I'm watching, I watch Pete go through and I'm watching Marcelo, you know, kind of, you know, start it basically. Yeah. yeah. And I think they both will be fine because they both take comedy seriously. Like Pete is a good stand up. You know oh, what I mean? He's incredible. And he got thrown into the biggest version of, you know, celebrity there could have ever have been. So he's experienced that right. and he's still standing. God bless him. Marcelo is the same kind of way, takes comedy very seriously. Yep. I think it's, you know, comedy first and then everything else is a bonus. And you seems know? like a really good dude. And seems like a and good dude. And he's incredibly talented. And so great, you know, his yeah. trajectory. So I don't I don't think he'll be in the mindset of, you know, this will last forever kind of thing. I think he'll right. always be mindful of, you know, his, you know, beginnings, you know, his family, his this and that and the other, and that's great. The ones that don't have that, it is so heartbreaking. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it's not like they're bad people. Right. They might happen to no. be handsome, beautiful, whatever it is, right. and they get thrust into the spotlight, and then all of a sudden there's nobody to catch them on the other side. I, I would go so far as to say they're victim. Like, they're One victims. One million percent. It's yeah. like that South Park episode. That shit was harsh. The British Spears, the, like the, the episode where they were, like, sacrificing celebrities, like a community, and <laughs> oh, they have no. to harvest. <laughs> like, well, the harvest why, is sacrificing a celebrity or something like that. That's why they have those myths of, you know, they're weird internet legends about how Hollywood, they all drink vampire yeah, yeah. blood. And, and I'm like, this is metaphorically accurate, meaning I don't, you know, think they're actually going vampire and killing blooding, unicorns. But they are sucking but souls out. They are sucking souls out and, for sure. and they will use people and that's why those stories resonate. Well, I mean, those people are using their planes and hotels as well, so. That's right, that's right, that's right. It just needs balance, Yeah, you know? Like yeah. We've all been told life is about balance, so. 
I don't unapplaud someone who's famous for the moment. You know, like I'm not necessarily a. I'm, you know, Taylor Swift is not a great example because she's not just of the moment famous, but she's hyper famous, right? Yep. Just a hyper famous person. But it seems like she has people around her, hopefully, that keep her in a good place. I would agree. It, you know, I can't tell if that's marketing or, or just in a reality place, <laughs> like I, just aware. I get that. You know? all of, when I say marketing, I just mean I can't know. No one can know. Yeah. But I'm with you. It seems like she's and Billie on. Eilish too. Just yeah, kaboom! But still with her brother, you know, with yep. her family, her this right. and the other. Right. And then the ones that are just like out there floating. You know, you worry about, you know, yeah. and it's, it, yeah, like they are their victim. I also, dude, did you see Blackberry? It's like, how can it be a victim when they're riding around in a mansion? It's like, you know, come on. First world problems, so problems, we were just, right? Santino and I were talking about wealth misery. Have you yeah. heard the phrase melt, wealth misery? No. Well, I just learned it and yeah. I'm going to use it every day of my life. Makes sense. It's a thing. Like wealthy people have to deal with like their There's kids a... killing themselves and like all kinds of crazy that. He shit. Go yeah. He goes, the suicide and the homicide rates, yeah. if you make over a million a year, crazy. That's off wild. the charts. It's because they think they got it. Mm -hmm. They think they got fulfillment mm -hmm. and balance because mm -hmm. culture told them be beautiful, mm -hmm. be rich, be powerful. Mm -hmm. They did it. They get there. Yeah. They're in the house. Yeah. Again, it's why in There Will Be Blood, he kills the guy. I mean, it's not a spoiler if the name is There Will Be Blood. <laughs> the title is a yeah. spoiler. But these yeah. these people are victims of a mentality, of mm -hmm. a mythos, just a story that we tell. Mm -hmm. And when the people find out it doesn't work, mm -hmm. they're literally murderous of themselves yeah. and sometimes of others because it's not right. By the way, I just want to throw my hat in that ring. I might not be a wooer. I can get confused. I can confuse my value with my brain, with my humor. Mm -hmm. That's just as dangerous. Mm -hmm. Hey, Scouty. That's a good. That's a good dream she's having. Yeah, buddy. She oh. sees it. She sees it. Go get it. Those of you that <laughs> can't see Scout had a little dream. She had a little dreamy. That's so sweet. I know. I know. Who's that at the door? <laughs> <laughs> this episode is brought to us by our friends at P. PYM Choose. PYM, prepare your mind. They are choose that help you manage feelings of stress, anxiety, and overwhelm. Good news. There's something here to help. It's wonderful when you're feeling worried, stressed out, or as Val and I like to say, you have a bee in your belly. Just chew two of these delicious, naturally flavored, no sugar added chews, and in minutes, for real, minutes, you start to feel more centered, calm, and in control. When I first tried them, it worked so well for both me and for Valerie that I ordered subscriptions for both my mom and my brother. Just so happy that their anxiety and stress have a natural, non-addictive, non-psychoactive solution. I like taking it at the start of my day when I'm uh, sitting down to answer emails or something to ease me into the work that I have to undertake. And I like to take it sometimes at the end of the day when I want to wind down and relax away the stress of the day. How does it work? PYM chews are comprised of proven amino acid complexes and adaptogens that help support your brain and your body's ability to organically support your ability, your body-based ability to manage and tolerate stress, anxiety, and overwhelm. I also take their Mood Magnesium at night, which helps me sleep and unwind. It includes three magnesiums with the most evidence to support their effects on stress and sleep. It's very effective in helping me fall asleep faster, stay asleep longer, and wake up feeling rested. The best part is a percentage of their profits, 1%, goes towards mental health nonprofits, including the one Bring Change to Mind. So help your body and your mind fast Fight off stress and overwhelm and sleep more deeply with PYM. Go to P, uh, sorry, you can PYM.com. Go to you can PYM.com slash weird and use promo code weird for 15% off. That's you can, like Y O U C A N, PYM.com slash weird. Use promo code weird for 15% off. Support your brain, support your mind, support your stress, your anxiety, your overwhelm, and sleep better and get 15% off and support the show. This episode is also brought to us by our friends at Bird Dogs, the makers of the best looking, best feeling shorts and swim trunks I have ever owned. 
I've never been a big short guy. Although I love swimming, I hate swim trunks, but Bird Dogs has literally come to change all of that. They're here to rescue our summer. Especially now that it's hot, I love liberating my legs and getting in water as often as I possibly can. And now, thanks to my dogs, I can do so without feeling weird. I can do it while feeling comfortable and licking, licking, licking really good. Licking? Looking really good. Bird dogs make you look good. Bird dogs also have khaki shorts that are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg, giving you a truly sculpted look, which I love. And bird dog shorts do the exact same thing as Lululemon, but they fit way better and they have the added bonus of not being Lululemon. <laughs> They're not stiff, restricting cotton. Bird dogs fix that issue by inventing cloud knit fabric that looks just like khaki but stretches so you get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. And Bird Dog uses anti stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long. And their swim trunks, I love this, not only do they look great, but they dry really, really fast. So go to birddogs.com slash weird for a free Yeti style tumbler with your order. That's birddogs.com slash weird and you will get a free Yeti style tumbler with your order. Trust me, you won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. All right, back to Keenan. Anyway, I'm just saying, I don't want to say like, oh, I'm just looking at the, the beautiful people that shoot up fast. Mm. I also, my wife does this. My daughter does this. I'm going to tell you this. I want to, I want to see what it makes you think of. I said to my wife in a moment of vulnerability when the baby, when Leela was young, and I just go, what if when she's like 16, I'm not doing anything? Mm. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. It's funny. I was just, it's a real question. It's man. a real question. Because I want her to think dad's cool. Yeah. Or, and dad is admirable. Really more than cool, admirable. Mm -hmm. Like, look, dad goes for it. Mm -hmm. I look up to my dad. Yeah. And Val said, it changed my life. She goes, you'll be her dad. You right? Is that a tearjerker? She goes, she don't, she's not gonna care what movie you're in or what that's awesome. You'll be her dad. You'll you'll have hung the moon. So that Val, not a show business. Sometimes person. it takes someone to tell you that though. Yeah. You know what I mean, it's hard to just have that perspective. That's like, it. You're like, that's a light bulb moment, you know? I love a light bulb moment. It's like, oh wow. Like I never was thinking about it that way. Right. Oh, what did I learn? Two days ago, oh, the, the Venetian, I was just in Vegas. <laughs> the Venetian is because it's Venice themed. I thought it was just like overall Italian and it was like they wanted to call it the Venetian. And then I thought about it and I was yeah. like, God, I've been going there for years. I lived in Vegas for four <laughs> and just never put the two and two. I was like, oh, it's like Venice, but I thought it was like a lot of different Italy yes, things. But yes. like, no, it's Venice themed and Venice people are called Venetians. There's another, the, the Wilton. <laughs> I'm 45 years old. I love it. We're the same. I'm 44, but we're the same. The Wiltern? Isn't it the Wiltern yeah. Theater? It's Wilshire and Western. Come on. Wiltern Theater. And I, thank you for letting me know right? that. I've been there a million times. Right. <laughs> Wait, did you say you lived in Vegas? I lived in Vegas. I lived out here. I lived out here for like eight years, like right after high school. But when I got the job, I was living here, but I didn't want to pay New York and California tax at the same time because... It's such an unpredictable thing. So yeah. like every year, I didn't, you know, I was West Coast footed. Like my agents managed lawyers. Everybody was out here. So I was just like not sure. You know what I mean? So I still had like one foot West basically. Yeah. So I moved to Vegas so I could come in and out and like work the biz or take meetings or sure. auditions or whatever in my hiatus weeks because I just didn't know how New York worked. I thought it was like Hollywood and TV and film in LA and then like the music business in New York or whatever. Right. Like not much like film shit. Right. And I wasn't wrong. It wasn't, you know, a whole lot of just like TV shows and movies. It was certain things that, you know, came from LA basically. So mm -hmm. I was just like, let me just stay close to LA or whatever. And then, you know, after like four years, I was like, man, probably just do the New York thing for a while. It just feels like. Did you like it? Doing living it. in Vegas? I loved it because I lived like away from the strip. I was just that's like what everybody, way out in the yeah, desert. Yeah, everybody pictures you living yeah. in the pyramid thing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Just riding the Luxor, just <laughs> fucking doing shows and buffets. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I lived way out uh, in Lake Las Vegas, which is like 10 minutes from the Hoover Dam. It's like kind wow. of middle of nowhere, you know, planned community thing. Wow. And I would drive into the strip to like go to dinner and shit or a Did show. Did you ever hang with Penn, Penn Gillette? He's out there or Brian Regan? No, I, I would. I just was to myself, basically. Oh. Yeah. 
But you have a family. You, 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 you kids I do now. Too. No, oh, this is before. Yeah, yeah, this is before. Oh, this is yeah. before. This is before. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, all right, where were we? Oh, not overrated with the thing, the jealousy. Yeah, you're. I mean, what you'll be mean? her dad's. Like, what were you? Yeah, tell me you know, what that like, makes What sense. if you know? Like, at sixteen, it reminded me of how I was feeling about the strike. It was like, what if this strike goes on to where I would have to get a job? I've never had a job. You know what I mean? Like, I used to cut grass. It's not a job. I would get twenty bucks per lawn or whatever, but that's not a job. Can you know, I you're please, a kid. You know. Can I please thank you? Just, I mean. So many of us out here are having the same thing. It's yeah, almost it's like, like, what would I do? It's a post-apocalyptic situation. Yeah. And we're all going around realizing just how worthless we are. Not worth, not really, but not that helpful. I'm not in that like helpful. In every day, I can't cut your hair. Nope. I can't cook your food. I, I'm sorry. What do we do? And then start uh, learning some shit. Santino and I were also laughing about how when we, look, I'm all for the strike, uh, obviously, and I stand with it. With both strikes, I'm a, I'm about it. I support it. I also just think it's funny that like it's such a detached industry from what everyone else. So I was just in Missouri. Mm -hmm. We were just visiting some friends by a lake, being a family. Yeah, it was awesome. And when I heard people talking about the strike, you, I mean, we like to be like union <sighs> strong. Like we stand with every union. And I'm like, there are people in coveralls that do not understand what we're talking about at all. <laughs> and you know, like, I'm not a big fan of striking. Like, I really wish, you know, there was another route because this isn't the 80s. Like, yes, it's the biggest strike since the 80s, but this is not the 80s anymore. Right. Like, this is going to be a global problem if this goes on for, like, a long period of time. Mm. Like, every movie I've watched lately, like, the credits are just very long, especially anything with CGI in it That's or right. whatever. Thousands of jobs. Thou millions, even. Millions you know of jobs. what I mean? And... People like you and me, totally different. I think about my friend Cat. My friend Cat is coming. I yeah. get she cuts my hair. She's my dear friend. Been working working together and friends for over a decade. Yeah. I'm like, that's what she does. She does hair on shows. <clears throat> like, so whenever I'm like, oh man, I I hope this wraps up. I'm like, there are people that their attitude is not. Oh boy, I hope this wraps up soon. And it, that that's who I really feel for. Yeah, man. I mean, it is. It's wildly detached from you know, a lot of people, like a lot of people don't even realize we're striking. You know what I mean? They're just right. like, every day, it's like, so what are you up to right now? I'm like, nothing, we're striking. What do you mean? It's like- You mean striking the set? You're yeah, taking yeah, down yeah, the set? Yeah, is that what you're talking about? Just getting rid of some lumber? I could use some lumber. Like, when is it? Is it like for sale? You're going way too far with what's not <laughs> happening, sir. None of that is happening. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. And yeah, to have to like explain it like, huh. Yeah, they don't really sympathize immediately. They're just like, yeah, no. interesting. No. Back to, you know, well, my life is, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. So you should be fine regardless. But it's not necessarily like that for everybody. Going back to, like, wealth misery, you would never think, you know, a billionaire would have issues type thing. Or their kids might have issues. But right. They, they do, you know, it's just now different you dynamics. Uh, my friend Rob Bell, he's a brilliant writer. We were saying now when a billionaire has kids, when we were kids, we were like, imagine if my parents were billionaires. Like, yeah. Richie Rich. Yeah. It'd be the best. And now when a billionaire has kids, you you feel bad for the kids. Yeah. You're like, how could you even remotely... You know what it is? You need you, that perspective. Yeah. I keep saying that word, but it is in, very, very important because you know what to appreciate. You know, you need rain so you can appreciate the sunny day. Right, right. You know what I mean? That It's... Pretty much that simple. I was just thinking about that on the drive down. I was thinking about what I would tell my daughter is I'm like, everything you want is on the other side of something you don't want. And that's just how it is. That's just how Isn't it is. Isn't that crazy? It's you get the courage after you do the thing that scares you shitless. That's right. It's a law of the universe. You starting out 14 did scary shit. Shit that would have been yeah. easier to not do. Much much, much, much. Do you remember? Definitely. Tell me about those early shows, because I, I, don't let me go on and on. I just remember being sick that I had a show, like couldn't oh, eat. Oh yeah, just nervous. Well, the Nickelodeon years weren't this is that, all that bad. All that was not that bad because there were seven of us. Like Kenny and Kel was different. Kenny and Kel was like me and him, and then we come out in front of that curtain, and it's like screams, and like I introduce myself, it's a scream, maybe. And then Kel would introduce himself and they would go crazy. You know what I mean? So it's like, all right, you know, Why just does the, processing the all that. The director cuts to you, that. though. Being like, 
Just like, yep, that there it is. <laughs> there you guys screaming for it. So we got a show to do and like more work to do and just like <laughs> a lot going on, especially for a young person to like, you know, process and not, you know, derail with like, what's wrong with me? Why aren't they screaming with me? Like, man, make it competitive. You right, know what I mean? Right. Like, I was just, you know, I was proud that they were screaming for him. But, we, you know, had, I did have those thoughts like, you know, should I work out more to get more screams dude, or we not? We just had Josh Peck on the show. You know yeah. Josh? Yeah. That was the same issue. I forget who his partner was, but everyone would... Night and day, him. Josh. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, he, he went... Drake. He went Drake hard Bell, at it. Drake yeah. He went he hard went at hard it. it. And oh, God yeah, bless him. Yeah. yeah. But that comes, and he would say, that came from a pressure, an inadequacy, like mm -hmm. a, a strange feeling. Yeah. I those those thoughts up. can creep up, but... I don't know. I never let it overtake, you know, or just hyper which I probably should have. I should have, you know, Josh looks great. You know what I mean? Yeah, but you look but great. But at the same time, I feel great, you know? Yeah. And that's, I think, what matters. People like, are different. I, you don't need me to tell you people are different, but like, you know what I mean? We yeah. can't all, we can't all. We can't all. I don't want it. Cut. I don't, you got to work yeah. and sacrifice too much for me to have that. Well, it's funny. When I was thinking about telling my daughter that, I was like, the good feeling of exercise comes after something you really don't want to fucking do. It's very do. painful. Yeah. It's very painful. Yeah. It just, and you know what I'd like someone to say, and I'll say it to my daughter, it just sucks. Yeah. It sucks. Yeah. I wish it was, so Life tell, stinks. So. <laughs> just a brilliant title. Life, Life stinks. stinks. Well, it's that. It's the fire in the house. That dude doesn't want to go in his house. His house is on fire. His house is on fire. He's got buckets. It would be easier. He's, He's gotta got to do buckets. it. You know, he That's doesn't not have a hose. Even, you know how many back and forth she's going exactly, to have to do? Exactly, but there's nobody to help him. He's got to do it. He's got to do it. And it sucks, but the feeling of having his house yep. and the fire being out will be worth it. But it's yep. on the other side. We're talking about Keenan's tattoo, if you're just listening to the audio. <laughs> It's on the other side of a lot of fucking buckets. Yeah. There's a story, I was thinking about it earlier. I won't tell the whole story. But talking about losing your innocence, mm. often in myths, your innocence is is a ball, like a a, a, a ball of light, mm -hmm. which makes sense because a pregnant lady's belly looks like a ball of light, like mm -hmm. it's the most innocent state. We're the always trying most to get... precious beings when Ex they're pregnant, yeah. Exactly. And you were precious. You yeah. were one with your mother, oh, no concerns. One yeah. with God. Like you were just like completely... You just, you didn't even know you were, and yet you were. Yeah. That's, that's a good definition of, yeah. of pure light. Yeah. And we lose it, and we want to get it back. And that's what so much of our endeavor, uh, endeavoring is, is mm -hmm. to get it back. So anyway, there's a story, and he has to, there's a, uh, I don't want to tell the whole story, but there's a guy, like an Obi-Wan kind of figure, mm -hmm. but he's at the bottom of a lake, and he's mm -hmm. in the woods. And everybody that goes in the woods dies. He, they drown in the lake. So a guy, a brave knight, you know, the hero of the story, goes in to retrieve this kind of sacred holy man that could that could retrieve this goal, this ball of light from him. But he's a scary, hairy man. He goes in the woods, and instead of going in the water, which is what everybody did, and that's why they drown, he just buckets it out one bucket at a time. And that's what they say. Couldn't you cry? It's just, it gave me the chills just remembering. It's like, nobody just wants to go bucket, bucket, bucket. He emptied the lake. Instead of going in the lake and drowning, this is what you were saying earlier. This is what we're saying about this social media shit, or like yeah. you know, people running to the front. You yeah. know, people just dive right in. And, and drown. these myths are thousands of years old. Some of them, they're fucking yeah. old stories, parables. Which because means it's, they're, they're, you're supposed to learn. And it means even back then, yeah, Jesus Christ was like these dudes are yeah. running right to the front. Yeah. <laughs> you know what it's I mean? Like, like yeah, it, take it. There was take a it slow. <laughs> They're gonna kill you anyway, so just why why rush to the guillotine? That's right. Yeah, interesting. That's right. Where did you learn this be presentness? Where did you learn this this? When I say smallness, I mean good small. I'm. I don't know if there was a specific moment. I've always really just been a fan. You know what I mean? I've been a fan of everything. Like, yeah. you know, anything you know, that was like, making me laugh, making my friends laugh. Yeah, good music food you know like you're an appreciator smells. yeah i think so you know so i've kind of always just had that like i enjoy like a a flower that's blooming as much as you know ginormous boobs or you know whatever yeah, it yeah. is you know what ginormous i'm saying boobs. <laughs> i thought you're gonna say like a beyonce concert yeah, or something. yeah yeah but what is what what is the thing in common between appreciating a flower and appreciating a beyonce concert it's being there 
It's dropping anchor and just do it. It like a, do it. a post I was looking at on Instagram, and it was about, like, you know, people being in the moment or whatever. So it was, like, the guy that just joined the team that's from Buenos Aires or whatever, the soccer player's name. What's his name? Like, the guy that just moved to Mi Miami. Messi, yes. Messi. Thank you. Messi's doing something in a game. And everybody's got their phones out watching, and David Beckham is on the sideline without a phone, just like watching. Yeah. And then next page was LeBron breaking the scoring record, and everybody's got their phones and cameras out, and there's like one rich dude, you know, just watching, just watching you know. And you, there's validity to both because yeah, you, it's nice to watch things back or record things or whatever, but balance, man, you yeah. know. When are you going to watch that video and what will the state of mind, what will your state of mind be when you're watching the video? Are you going to film your reaction or your friend's reaction? Chasing the dragon's tail, it man. It never ends. It never ends. Talk about old stories. I think it's, it's not Madame Bovary. It, fuck. It doesn't matter. There's a, there's a very, very, very old story about a young lady who was cursed to look at reality through a mirror. Mm. So she's walking around and she can only look in the mirror. And and my professor at the time, Dr. Stein, he goes, if you saw, it doesn't matter, Janet Jackson, mm -hmm. but it was in a mirror, would you did you really see her? You know what I mean? It's like, it's it's kind of what's happening. Yeah. I see all these things. I saw a dude on an obstacle course, like a rock wall, swinging. He looked like like a Silverback gorilla, like mm -hmm. the strongest primate I've ever seen. Yeah. Swinging, flipping, da, on the bars. He had a whole routine and I watched it. Did I really see it? Mm -hmm. I just saw it in a mirror. I just saw it and I went on. Mm -hmm. And the next thing was just like someone's omelet. Did you, you know really I mean? experience it? Yeah. I didn't. Nope. And you would get more out of just a flower perceived presently than a Beyonce concert or whatever spectacle, the Super Bowl. I've been to the Super Bowl. I was too busy thinking in my mind. I, I wasn't there. Drop in and be there. I didn't learn how to do that until later. Yeah. Drop in and be there. It's important because I think those things fan the flame of your 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 fanaticisms. You know what I mean? And you get it tells you who you really are and what you really like. Yes. You know what I mean? It's like, because when you're present and you don't like something, it's obvious. You know it. Yeah, you know it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And when you're present and something's awesome, it's insane. Yeah. Like the first time I saw Travis Scott was at a fucking festival in New Orleans, the Voodoo Fest. Mm. And, you know, outdoor fest, I don't do them much because it's a lot of people. Yeah. And this was a lot of people. <laughs> and it was supposed to be Donald Glover, but his father had just passed away that weekend. So Travis had stepped in and I wasn't too aware of Travis. Like I'd heard a couple things, but I'd never seen him live and I didn't really know a lot of his music. And we're waiting all day. It's Sunday, the, you know, it was a weekend festival. So like they've been partying the whole time, like my wife and her friends, you know. And I stayed back Friday and Saturday, you know, just to relax because I can't do festivals three days in a row. I yeah. just was like, I'll go the last day for the headliner, you know what I mean? And that'll be my thing. Couple right. hours, I'm out of there. And I'm like, yeah, oh, it's Travis Scott. I don't know much Travis Scott. Travis Scott, hmm, how, what's this going to be like? We're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting. You know, the headline has to go on when it's dark finally or whatever. That's how you know it's like, you know, exciting time. So it was very still, you know, in between the last act and when Travis was going on for like 30 minutes. You know what I mean? And then like all of a sudden he stepped on stage and within two seconds everybody around me was twerking. And then there was 100,000 people jumping up and down at the same pace. And it was just like, Jesus, this is a whole lot of energy yeah. all going in one direction. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. That's an amazing thing to witness. Right. Instead of going, he's playing my favorite song. Yeah. Oh, that's what he attention. opened with. Yeah. You just saw, dude, the same is true of traffic. One time I walked in my garage and I was very present. Mm -hmm. And I, I looked, I have two cars. Mm -hmm. Our family has two cars. I just looked at two cars. Yeah. I saw them. Yeah. I know this sounds stupid. I have two of these. I go, what the fuck? Yeah. These huge yeah. metal. Engineered. Glass. Yeah. Engineered. Yeah. There's two of them. Rubber. Rubber. <laughs> Fabric. Seat belts. Yeah. But you know. And it they was do real. stuff. And I was like. You I, can go far. I felt eight years old. And yeah. I was like, 
my parents, I used to have a line I'd say on stage, I go, my parents have no idea where I am right now. Yeah. And I felt that freedom again. I was like, yep. I could get in one of these cars. It's one of my favorite and brewer jokes. Any, what's that? It's like when you're single, you could just like, let's go across the world tonight. We'll get on a train. We'll be gone for three weeks. It's <laughs> like when you have like responsibility, you can't do that shit. But when you're single, it's like the world is your oyster. Yeah. yeah. What's great for, about me is I never wanted people like Jim. They would be like, let's go on a road trip. I, I crave I'm the good. excuse of children. Hey, could you just send me a postcard? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to the deli. That's what they, I went to school on the East Coast. They'd be like, we're driving to the L.L. Bean store. Because <laughs> it was the only thing that was open 24 hours or yeah. whatever. And I was like, nah. I'm good. But I had to come up with an excuse. I'd yeah. be like, well, uh, tomorrow morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you have kids, you just go, I can't leave. Man, I am Even when you get a dog. Greatest excuse. I was like, yeah, the dog. Greatest excuse to not come and also leave early. <laughs> kids. I mean, look, don't anyone go and have kids just for this, but do it 30% <laughs> for that. <laughs> that's, that's absolutely, that's valid. That's valid. There's some worth to doing 30 it early. Is fair. Yeah. Tell me a story about a host or somebody on SNL or maybe anywhere mm. that that impressed you with their humility and, and with their presence. Chadwick was a, a big one. You oh, know really? what I mean? I mean, Tom was like one of the ultimates. Like when I first met Tom Hanks and he called me by my name he, before I was I able to it. introduce His myself. His voice is so classic. I yeah. Hear, hey, Kenan. I was like, I yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Kenan. I couldn't handle it because at the time he was, you know, the biggest movie star probably ever. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Like nobody's done the back to back Oscar He's thing. He's Streep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Man on Streep, one million percent, and could not be nicer. So, like, that was crazy. And, like, it set the, like, between him and Spielberg, like, it's like, yo, who do you think you are that you're not going to be nice to people? Right. Like, these guys have achieved Everything. so much. Yes. You know, and they're still very present. Look you in Enjoying your eyes. It. They know They know who you are, you know what wow. I mean, kind of thing, if you're this, on the radar or whatever. This is what you're really. See, this is a gift you're giving me and hopefully the listeners. is like fandom is precious. Yes. And Tom Hanks does not need to know who you are. No. And no, nobody does. I've heard Eddie Murphy, by the way, apparently Neil Brennan told me he knows everybody. Yeah. Because he watches everything. Yeah. And he's a fan. So I'm like, you think Eddie Murphy watched my special? He's like, definitely. And Most like, definitely. He just That's crazy. That's what I'm saying. Yes. And I'm like, but why when you get big and powerful? And you don't have to care. Because what is caring? Caring can be used as a social contract. I care about mm -hmm, you. Mm -hmm. Keenan, I need help. I mm -hmm. need food. I need shelter. I need money. I mm -hmm. need medical, whatever. So that's like a manipulation. That as you know, animals, we sometimes do that. Like yeah. it can be a little fake. So they don't need to do that, right? They have all their needs met. And yet Tom Hanks took the time. Tom Cruise, I've heard, is the same way. Hyper the you, same way. Really? Like I'm such a fan of Tom Cruise. It's Me crazy. Too. Too like. Cruise. He's so dedicated, and I think the whole Scientology of it is a reflection of his dedication more so than how weird that religion is. I see. You know what like I mean? Like he got in. Like he likes it. He got in, but, you know, he's also in pursuant of something, and they were fulfilling yep. a big part of they what met, he was pursuing. Look, I, I'm with you. Say, I know there are bad things to say. He found an energy, like you at the crowd, with the he jumping up and down. An he found a group that was like, we are literally militaristic about self-improvement. He loves like, to salute. He never was in the military. <laughs> loves to salute. He loves to play those roles where he gives respect to those ones because yes. he was never one of those, but he would have been if he wasn't an actor kind of thing is his mentality or whatever. Right, right. But also, he wants to be a high-powered individual, and he found people to help him get through that trajectory. You know what right. I mean? Like, all they do is give him toys and let him go play in the desert. You know what I mean? <laughs> and he shows up here and there to allow them to recruit for their but thing, but he's not that connected, I don't think, to the indoctrination of all these people right. in my mind. I think he's just being Tom Cruise. You know? It sharpens him. Yeah. It gives him a... Yeah, I get it. it can't Channel be, his energy. I it can't be completely naive, which is burdening because in his pursuant, he's, you know, gotten mixed in with, you know, a situation where you can't just peace. denounce, you know what I mean, or whatever, and peace out and just be yeah. like, I'm just yeah. Tom Cruise now, I don't associate right. with those people right. anymore, kind right. of thing. Right. And I think you see him wearing that. But on the other side of it, he is hyper humble and aware, you know what I mean, and like he does his research. But isn't, I think this is a clue, and this is the gift that I'm saying you're giving, is like, 
fuck needing to be mm-hmm. a fan yeah. out of some social manipulation or wanting to belong no. or wanting to be taken care of. These people are teaching us that past, well past the point of needing it. Yes. The point of life is to surrender to it and to appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Like Tom Cruise and Tom Hanks were both vulnerable enough to let your work into them. Mm -hmm. And isn't that the definition? Literally, you could trace it back to the way our brains work. They're remaining whatever neuroplasticity is, like they're remaining porous. They're becoming a fan of something new, like you watching Travis. I'm going to become the fan of something new. What is fan from that moment on. And what is the opposite of that? Rigid. Like these are rivers. Stiff. Yeah, and dead. Unappreciated. Dead. No one likes you. Right. You know, that's a, that's a saltine existence. The Not people, to take anything away from saltines. Saltines are great when you're you sick. Know, you know, saltines and a Coca Cola. That'll, that'll do it every time. That'll get you back. So There's that something means something that matters. That but going back to Chadwick, Chadwick was another hyper humble individual that I was surprised by because he was having the biggest week ever. Like the biggest week I had ever seen in the black culture zeitgeist, basically. Yeah. Like, yeah, Denzel does a training day here and there, but we're used to that from Denzel. You know, we're used to him being like a leading man in a movie. Yeah. This was the first black superhero moment in Marvel when Marvel couldn't have been bigger. Yeah. You know what I mean? And everybody's excited about this movie, black director. Yep. Hyper black culture moment that week. And he could have been walking around in a dashiki and, you know, <laughs> right. You know, and really been on one, but he was beyond humble and focused and just on his toes like you could there was no way you could tell that he was suffering Mm. you know what i mean Mm. and knowing that and watching him for six days it was really really impressive like staying porous you know what i mean vulnerable it's like the opposite of this rigid yeah nothing gets to me yeah no you can't you have to surrender in a way, especially yeah. like the story of that week for me, as far as like stress is concerned, was we did the Black Jeopardy and Black Jeopardy had been going so well. Tom Hanks was the one that did it last right before that. Mm. And it was like, I think it was like a, a MAGA hat kind of character or whatever. Oh, yeah. So that was like the yeah. biggest, you know, kind of like societal conversation, good comedy piece to get the dinner table combo started yes. kind of thing. Sorry, you know what I'm I mean? gonna interject. You know what is another one? Yeah. Easy. Easy. Remember that one? Aziz, I'm sorry. Easy. Easy. Absolutely. I'm not saying. I'm not saying. Easy. Easy. Can you believe there was a time that sketch was like shaving in ice water with a very for, for easy. Us, even me watching I mean, it, I was say like something mundane and everything explodes. Yes. This is like nuclear holocaust. I was blah, blah, nervous blah. for you. Yeah. I was like, don't no. Nah. Well, it was perfect. Da, da. Perfect. So. Big moment for, you know, a zeitgeist, you know, culture thing for a sketch. That's a big thing yeah, for a sketch. I remember. So when Chadwick came, it was like, we should do a Black Jeopardy because, you know, more than likely, you know, at the be- at the base of it, he's black. You know what I'm saying? So why not do another Black Jeopardy? But topping Tom Hanks was like, all right, well, we need to make this. Definitely do that because Chadwick deserves it. He's having the, you know, the biggest moment or whatever. Yeah. But... We didn't quite have it down pat until I think damn near dress rehearsal. We were still tweaking. Mm. And then afterward, he was still finding it. You know what I mean? He was like questioning should he be, you know, like an African or should he be actually T'Challa? You know what I mean? Or whatever. And um he never he never buckled to the point where he, you know, just checked out of it mm. or, you know, tanked it to cut it, not to do it. Or like voted against it or do people do that tank it to cut it? I've never oh yeah. Heard that. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh wow. Because they don't get it or don't want to do it or whatever kind of thing. Yeah, it's, it's like whatever. And whether they know it or not, you know right. what I'm saying? Like, you know, they they end up tanking it. Wow. And that is is harsh, man, because it's like I wonder if this would have been good if that thing didn't happen yep. or whatever, right? Bill Lawrence just did it and he talked about table reading. Yeah. With actors that would tank the whole episode. Was that Bill? I think that was actually somebody else. Somebody told me about a, a pilot 
and the actor hated the material so much they tanked it on purpose. The show didn't get picked up, obviously. I'm like, terrible. What are you doing? What are you doing? Kill it. Everything and then deserves work a chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. It, at least put your back behind it a little bit. Which yeah. is why I try not to laugh during sketches because it's like you want to service the material as written to right. see, you know what I mean, or whatever. Right. Sometimes shit is funny. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I can't help it. Right. So I, try, I smirk oh, I don't think and it, try I, to hold it. But, I don't think of you as a, yeah. as a laugh. I, it's weird how we've sort of culturally changed on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It used to be like, everyone was like, don't do that. Don't do that. Then it became like, we yeah. love that more yeah. than anything. Now we're in a nice gray middle we're zone. We're in a nice middle zone. Like, don't yeah. do too much. Don't make it obvious. Kind don't of thing. too much. Not too much. Yeah. But yeah, Chadwick finally found it. And the live, you know, show was the best it had gone. You know yeah. what I mean? Which is such a blessing. Well, so Chadwick passed, which yeah. is a huge tragedy. Mm -hmm. But it's doing my heart well to know. See, this is my point. One day lived in the style that you're describing mm -hmm. that this man was doing yeah. is better than 90, 100 years where you're not, where you're looking at your life through a mirror. Yep. Where you're never or there. Or you're just, you know, a crotchety person across the street. You've never been anywhere. Yeah. It's like sometimes I talk to people like that a lot of, you know, I won't say, who, but you know, <laughs> people I know. And you, you'd be like, I remember we were talking about like Italy or something, mm -hmm. and they were like, "I've never been to Italy." I'm like, "You've never been here. Like, you think you're gonna go to Italy and suddenly become that's my favorite sketch of all time? Maybe is Sandler. Sandler was great. It, it was filled, brilliant. It filled a blank in. I I reference that sketch constantly. For those that don't Just know, because you're in Italy. If it you're mean, sad in New Jersey, yeah, you, you didn't change from 250 pounds to 120. That's right. You're still 250. And you're yeah, and you if you're not a blindfold and strawberry, this if is you. You're sad in New Jersey. Person, you're going to be, gonna be sad, sad in Italy. Italy yeah. <laughs> and you go and they have diagrams to be like, I can't yeah. stress this enough. <laughs> if you're depressed yeah. here yeah. and you come to Italy, yeah. you'll you're be still depressed, depressed in depressed. Italy. Yeah. And if you're not a blindfold and strawberry person at home, Hilarious. you're not going to be a blindfold and strawberry person <laughs> in Italy. And it's like, "Oh my god." Yes. It's it's recognizing that everywhere is Italy, traffic is Italy, this moment is Italy. Yeah. We're waiting for something to basically scream and woo us. We want it to like just give it to us. Mm -hmm. But this is kind of like saying everything we want is on the other some uh, other side of something we don't want. What we don't want to do is be vulnerable enough to be present. Yeah, and because sometimes the presence. Present the present sucks sometimes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's a long flight to Italy. And if you're flying coach, it's even longer. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. it's a long process. That's right. But on the other side of that process is Italy. Right. You know what I right. mean? Right. And I've had moments on flights. I can't always do it. I mean, yeah. I'm watching movies I've moments seen. Moments on flights. Are Killing? you kidding? Yeah. Like I remember I had the awesome opportunity to like go to Cannes for like a technology convention. Like it wasn't even a film fest. It was like some like tech con or something that they were having. Mm -hmm. It was like free trip, great. Took me, you know, my oldest daughter was like one years old at the time. And, or maybe like 10, 11 months, still like, still in a stroller, a very big stroller basically. Mm -hmm. So she was that age. And we were flying from Tampa because we were living there and, you know, we connected through Atlanta and then in like Paris and then to like Nice or whatever to get to Cannes, blah, blah, blah. Oh, wow. So it, we, I was like, it was smooth, you know, like leaving out of Tampa is like the easier TSA thing, you know what I mean? So we're already we through. Looking at the bright side. Connecting in Atlanta, it's fine. It was like, we had to run for the plane. It was like a last minute kind of like whatever's a delay. It only gave us like 40 minutes or whatever, but we weren't concerned. We made the flight, great. Fly all night. Just when I was getting my daughter down, like I made a little bed for her on the ground or whatever kind of thing, like, because we were we were flying first class. I'm not going to lie. It was nice. So there was area on the What if it was a free trip in their life? Yeah, it's not like I was throwing her under the seat. <laughs> it was like there was an area. So I made like a nice little blanket area and I put her down, and it was like everybody was, it was dark and it was perfect. She was about to doze off. The guy in front of me turns his fucking light on. And he's like, I lost my phone in my chair. Looking for the phone for 20. She wakes up and is up the rest of the flight. Oh, no. And I'm like, shit. <laughs> Nine hours or eight hours or whatever it is, she's up. And I'm like walking around the plane with her, feeding her bananas, letting her just 
put bananas all over. Just, just playing. <laughs> we get to Paris. This is a nightmare trip. Talk about being in the present and sometimes the present can suck. Yeah. Get to Paris. It's like five in the morning. We got a connection flight, but only like an hour to grab it or whatever. Everything's going fine until we get to like a security checkpoint and they ask us, where's the ticket for the baby? And they're like in America or on Delta, they just put Snapchat. it on your ticket. Yeah. They don't give you a separate ticket. Yeah. So they're like, no, the ticket, she has to have a separate ticket in Europe or whatever. And we're like, shit, what are we supposed to do? Like go back to the airline counter or whatever. And the Paris airport is not easy with a stroller. There's like you know, levels that, you know, a person with steps can do, you yeah. know what I mean? Because it's all like modern glass, like go up steps and then go over here and then go down steps and it's that area. Right. So we had to take slow ass elevators to do everything. <laughs> Clocks ticking, get to the airline counter. It's six in the morning. So of course that diaper's full now. So my wife's over there changing <laughs> diapers while I'm arguing with these people that they didn't give us a ticket. They're trying to make us prove that it's our child, all this extra shit. And I'm like, finally give us the ticket. It's like they just never gave us a ticket in Tampa. You know what I mean? Like we just checked yes. in normal, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we you know, want American a ticket. American casual, yeah. <laughs> American Get casual? Get the ticket. Two more elevators, you know what I mean? Blah, blah, blah. Running for the flight, go through security, like luggage, x-raying, and just like praying that they don't pull anything aside to give the double check. Is this Cheerios or not? Like, please let us get there. Get there. Last people on the plane, whole plane looking at us. <laughs> it's like, all right, cool. We get there. Fine. Right? <laughs> Fly to Nice. Get to Nice, no luggage. I can't. The thing I, I had to this. go there for the holy the the meeting I had the only meeting I had to go there that gave us the free trip was that morning, and I have banana shoulders all across my black t shirt or whatever. Banana shoulders. I was like, all right, I'll go shopping, but it's can. And every shop is like oh, yeah. Europe couture and soccer yeah. jerseys. And shit. I was like, I'm fucked. This I'm is fucked. like trying to get a bathing suit at a like a five star hotel. You're like, this is it's gonna be three hundred dollars. Eight thirty a.m. <laughs> at this point, you know what I mean? It was the longest night ever, and I just went with a dirty shirt. It made for great conversation because everybody could sympathize. Like, yes, I had a long flight with my daughter, and they lost her luggage, and here I am in front of you. But let's talk about AI. virtual, yeah, <laughs> whatever the fuck. Incredible. <laughs> but after that. It was like an eight-day European vacation kind of thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, right. It's on the other side. It was a 30-minute thing that morning, and the rest of the day was free. And you don't really remember it. Yeah. I mean, you do, but it also, this is another thing Rob Bell says. He all goes, I remember is the nice thing. That's right. The worst things that happen become the good stories. Yep. And then you got all these other nice things. Yep. We were just flying with my daughter yesterday. Jesus. We yeah. just got home. Crazy. And I was holding her because she was crying, and I, she needed to go to sleep, and I held her. It's just another... This is kind of like a contrast to your story. And I was, she fell asleep, but we were landing. And I was like, please don't make me. Like, I got this baby. Right. I'm her seatbelt. Right. And they didn't, it was, it was a nice little. They let you just keep they it. They the other way. God. They looked the other way. God bless him. God I mean, because if you're crashing, everybody's gone anyway. It doesn't matter. Right? <laughs> I'm, but that that's such a blessing when it's like just yeah, I know the rules and I know the cons, but just let this I got it. It's the sort of and we don't have as much of it. I feel like we had more of that. I know there was more recklessness as well. Yeah. But in my childhood in the eighties, nineties, I remember there being more whatever that is. More is this the time? Yep. I just had it this morning. Drop my daughter off at a new camp. She's mm -hmm. she's nervous. She mm -hmm. warmed right up. Mm -hmm. You know what I do? I, I bet you're this way too. I start a little party. Uh -huh. I get in the mix. Yeah, flipping kids around. It's, yeah. it's so fun. Like show her that they're not dangerous monsters. Just show her how to do it. Yeah. What's your name? Yeah. Kid doesn't say anything to me. I'm like, all right, talk yeah, later. Cool. Just keep we'll moving. Later, it's yeah. fine. It's all right. I get it. Kid had sunscreen all over her face. I go, you wearing any sunscreen? I'm <laughs> doing bits. Yeah. <laughs> Having a great time. Nobody got that one. But there was a rock wall, not a, maybe a foot and a half off the ground. Uh huh. At, and then the playground. And my daughter just, as anyone would, got climbed over the little rock wall. When I say this wasn't dangerous, you would laugh in my face if we were watching this and I go, that wasn't dangerous. Right. You would just be like, why did you even yeah, bring need danger to verbalize into this? that, yeah. <laughs> and this one of the teachers goes, we go around. I'm like, oh. that that's making me buckle up my sleeping baby. Yeah. Like, don't just let it go. Yeah, yeah. No that there will be a time later mm -hmm. when my daughter isn't scared. Right. But there's a certain, 
look the other wayness yeah. that was good in the eighties and nineties. You know who I blame? Yeah. Corporate America. Tell me. Insurance. Yeah, money. You know. Yeah. If that kid falls, if your kid falls, whether she can handle it or not. Yeah. There are bad people in the world that have yep ripped people off. Ripped people off. Right. You know the apples have, have spoiled certain things. But at the same time, time, yeah, we have the capability to fight back. That's right. Well, my wife and I were just laughing about this. We go, parents that go, life isn't fair. And I'm like, we don't, we don't say that. <laughs> life isn't fair. Fuck yeah. you. You're in the way. Right. Make it fair now. Yeah. yeah. Give me two cookies. Do something <laughs> to balance that fair. You know you're, I mean? you're the arbiter of fair in this moment. Well, life isn't fair. Well, what are you trying to prepare me for? You right. Know? Like, There'll be plenty of free range examples of yeah, me getting kicked in the I'm nuts. Saying. Do we have to do this now? Right. I don't Can think I so. have a Fig Newton? Between us right now, life's pretty good. Right. You know what I mean? In this, in this house, in the room, right? Well, this that is we're what, having this. I feel like there's so much to burn down our house in yeah. the world. And look, but I don't know. I don't know how to talk about this, but I'm like, people seem to believe that worrying is helping. Yeah. And it's not. Be informed, but getting obsessed and getting moment by moment speculation yep. from newscasters yep. on these situations. I want a supercut of Jordan missing, yeah. and I want a supercut of people on the news saying shit that never even came close to happening, <laughs> and turns out, just like what you and I do, it was just some writer going, say uh, maybe if, uh, if the plane hits the nuclear power plant, uh, the eastern seaboard will be, uh, everyone will die. That's why the weather people are my favorite. They're like, we think. That's right. Okay, stop yelling at us because we weren't totally accurate but about this. But they're the only ones the we do yell at. We yeah. go, I thought you said rain. Yeah. We never go, hey, yeah. Wolf Blitzer, I, I you, you said, said nuclear yeah. annihilation. Yeah. They never, they, no. No, nobody goes back. Because it's a drug, you want to panic. Mm -hmm. And then I resent that people say to me, like, you're not informed enough, yeah. or I'm worried that they would say that I'm not informed enough. I'm like, know enough to know how to vote and where to donate. At yeah. the end of that, you're just getting off why is your television watching somehow Ivy League? Right. <laughs> it's it's not. It's not. You watch television. You first watch of all. TV. Yeah. And then you read those Ivy Leaguers me. don't because there's so much to read and know about just in books. That's right. They don't have time for TV. Eternal truths. Yeah. But that, you know who's super zen like that? Mm. And we call him Obi. Well, Tracy calls him Obi Lauren Kenobi. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's like, we go on 11.30 not because we're ready. You know what I mean? It's because it's 11.30. That's right. And he's like, he approaches it a lot of different things that way. Is he like a, a I'm only asking because so many, like a father figure to you? Did he become like that? For sure. I mean, he's like the fourth one, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I've been very lucky to be surrounded by, like, good, you know, mentor kind of people or whatever, but... Yeah. He definitely is like father figure to, you know, a lot of us. You know yeah. what I mean? But it's like a it's like Neil Brennan syndrome. Like he's the youngest of ten. You know what I mean? Like I feel wow. like I keep a distance with Lauren because like he always is wanting to be like, hey, come with me and go over here. But like I just have this fascination with what he represents. Yeah. That I'm like a little distant. Like, you know, who am I to like text Lauren and like call him? But some people do. You know what I mean? But like, I'm just I like, play it the same way. I'm a little bit of a barrier of like, man, that dude is on a whole nother level. And like, you don't just tuck up under ginormous dragons like that. And then you, it might accidentally step on you. You know what I right. mean? Or scratch right. you or in some sort of way. You know what I mean? That was my. It gets painful. <laughs> I did Fallon back when Fallon was the old Fallon. Yeah. When people were like, I wonder if Fallon's gonna make it. <laughs> and I did stand up on that. And then I walked in the hall, it's a 30 rock, and I walked in the hall and Lauren walked by me and he didn't say anything. I'm 44 now, Keenan. Yeah. Of course he didn't say anything. Yeah, hilarious. Of course he didn't he probably didn't see it. Yeah. What do you what do I think? He's up in his office right. watching the feed. But I did when yeah. I was 20, whatever, or yeah. 30, whatever. I was like, like hmm. he didn't speak. <laughs> Interesting. And I called Mulaney and Mulaney was like, he he did me a real favor. He's like, you know, Pete, when you do a show and you murder mm -hmm. and you're like just super in yourself and feeling great, you're a yeah. dragon. You're briefly yeah. a dragon. And you walk out and there's an open micer there and you don't look at him and go, you're the next great one. Right. That's what happened. Yeah. It's not about you. He's killing his own thing and he walked by. Yeah, that's it. But that's the dragon thing. Yeah. I let him squash me because just for a moment I was like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
I'm is this when you, you tell me I'll be on is SNL? Is this it? Yeah. It, I'm t- it's like, yo. No. A little bit of distance. Yeah. But Protect yourself. Yeah, he drops dimes like that. And yep. he, his, you know, a, approach to it, he's very, like, straight-faced. Like, whatever happens, you know what I mean? Like, Yeah. You got to be. Don't let it make or break you. How like, did he? Well, well there's people is... that have gone there and left early or left quickly, and it has broken them. You know what I mean? Mm. But there's people that have gone and left early. That it hasn't. There's yeah. people that have thrived because they just got a splash of what that show can do for you as far as like getting your name out there. And then they took their talents and continued to thrive. You know right, what I mean? Right. Which is where you want to aim for, in my opinion. Yeah. Like you don't want to like put your hopes and dreams all on one specific thing because if it doesn't work out, it wrecks the other 50, 40 years of your life. That's that's right. crazy. Right, right. We can edit this out because it's not that kind of show, but was he zen when Chappelle did the monologue that no one was ready for? Yeah. He wasn't... I can't picture him being like, what he, is happening? Uh, right, because he <laughs> he knew... Like, they had had the conversation. Like, I think even in, like, hallway joking, it's like, you know it's going to be a completely different monologue for the last Oh, year. really? And I was like, yeah, of course. I would expect nothing less kind of thing. Right, right. And it's not like... Because you can't. It's can. Lauren's burden to care. Those aren't his words. He's like, yeah, but you gave up a platform. It's like, eh, right. that's not how it works. Right. You know what I mean? And like, also, Dave's not a hyper, like, malicious individual either. You know what I mean? He's just a processor of his personal thoughts. And aren't we supposedly allowed those things, I guess? Right. In, a, in you know, a well, way where with... I guess it doesn't overly harm individuals necessarily. Right. And. We've gotten very sensitive these days, so it's, it's hard on stand-ups, I would, I would have to assume. Well, uh, first of all, I'm not that way, like, mm. meaning Dave has that. He's yeah. a little rascal. Yeah. I mean that as a compliment. He's out there. Uh-huh. He really wants to push it. Yeah. And find it. Yes. I'm kind of doing Ice Pack 2.0 over yeah. it. Like, hey, <laughs> do you ever look at the back of an Ice Pack? <laughs> look, that, I'm actually selling myself short. I think you if are, you really listen far. to my, well, that's kind of, I wasn't fishing, but if you really look at what I'm saying, I, I just did this new hour. I was like, like 70% of my new special, like, I'm like, it's about death. I'm talking about death. Like I, I'm joking about this, but it's like underneath it, there's this like, what the fuck we die yeah. the whole time. So I'm doing my own <laughs> version, but Chappelle's doing, doing something completely different from all of us, different from all of us. Yeah, I mean, he's just a, a different special guy, but yeah. That's his talent, you know what I mean? And a lot of people have theirs. And if you focus on it and and stay true to it and take it very seriously, yeah, it will, I think, pay off. Because, like, the legends of those, those that seem like they make it look easy, if you will. Yes. Like, the legend of John Legend is the fact that he was in the piano room, like, notoriously in college. Mm. Like, he spent... Yeah, eight hours a day right. in the booth, and people could hear him. Right, and they have those memories of hearing him before he became. That's it. Because he just that's what he, he worked was at doing. It. Yeah, he worked at it. Yeah, that that's exactly. I know we've been making that point a lot, but I don't think we can say it too much. It's you inspiring can't. to me. As and I, as, you need it, like yeah. because yeah, the world is there's toxic individuals that don't give a fuck that are just constantly trying to chip away at you or whatever. So. And they're vampires that'll stop you and squash yeah. you. Thank God. Okay, so The War of Art, Stephen Pressfield just did the show, and he was talking about, he was like, be a, don't look to people, look to places. So he's like, when Arnold Schwarzenegger was having a rough day, he'd Mm -hmm. go to the gym. Mm -hmm. He didn't look to people to Mm -hmm. tell him he was great. He just went and worked at it. And all of these, we've been talking about rappers and Jordan and all, they all did the same thing. Mm -hmm. They were locational. Jordan went to the gym. John Legend went to the piano room. It's like Kobe never went to the club. He went to the gym. Right, exactly. And I've told the story a million times, but Gary Larson, the guy who, the far side, remember mm, the cartoon, the far yeah. side? He sent out 15 submission packets to every newspaper in town. He didn't hear from anything. Yeah. Anybody, and not a single one got back to him. He got, decided to get in his car and drive to, I think it was Chicago. He drives to Chicago, goes into whatever, the Sun Times, walks in, waits for a meeting, shows him his stuff. They're like, this is incredible. And they gave him a gig. He drives home. What's in the mailbox? 15 rejection letters and if he had waited and gotten those rejection letters he's like i wouldn't have had the courage to drive to chicago so go to the gym go to the piano room go to chicago go to chicago yeah be locational don't wait for letters in the mail to tell you that you're worth it that's 
definitely something I try to, I just told this guy in Vegas yesterday, he was a security guard, like bouncer in the club. And he was telling me that he he's an actor. And he was like, do you have any like, you know, words of encouragement? And like, it wasn't advice. Like, what do I do? Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, stay focused, but you need to get to a platform. Mm. Like Las Vegas is not an actor's platform. There's not a lot of theater there. Right. You got to put yourself in position to have opportunity. Yeah. So I was like, you got to get to LA or New York, however you do it, even if you do it from Vegas. You know what I mean? Like I get it, go out there for a day or two or the weekend or whatever, or get a gig that'll give you an apartment, you know what I mean? Or something right. like that. Right. But you got to get to where that stream is flowing. Right. If you want to catch those particular fish. I was going to say, you want to get struck by lightning, try putting on a tinfoil hat and walking in a field. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. You got to put yourself in, in a position to succeed. You right. can't just have dreams and then and that sit there. And that guy also might just have too many people in his life that aren't encouraging him, and yeah. we need to stop looking to those people. You yeah, I mean? I mean, either that or societal pressures, maybe whether they are, you know, bills or... Right, of course. You know, you you know, your parents telling you need a, a regular job so you can, you know, have a you know sustainable future. You know what I mean? They, the actor's life is not, you know, predictable like right, that, and right. it doesn't make a lot of sense for a lot of old-minded kind of people. Right. Yeah. But no. It it, it if benefits. you believe, believe. Right. Don't be naive necessarily. Like if you move to L.A. and you just get rejected eight million times, maybe, maybe dude pivot. You know, when what I mean? was but shooting. Believe. Crashing in New York every once in a while. Somebody, this happened more than once. A comic would come up to me and be like, I saw your show and I yeah. moved to New York and that's what I'm doing. I'm like sleeping on the subway and I'd be like, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, you're, like, don't be delusional. That's a, sh that's a show. Yeah. Like, we exaggerated how rough it was. Yeah. You should be a waiter. Yeah. <laughs> like, like if you what you're doing is paying you in a way that that's how you're living is like maybe make a different decision i completely agree follow the dream that's following you that's what i always say Thank so you. like that's it, why I, I love cliches that's it you know what i mean i made that like, one. they mean that's they it. mean things like, it took me 20 years guidance. to get to that between that and like motivational quotes or whatever like neon little yeah. little things yeah. here or you know words written on the wall that'll just like it matters carpe diem whatever yeah. the fuck that's right follow like, your bliss that's another one what's the other side of that coin you know what i'm saying right you you don't motivate yourself you know right. you, do, you don't inspire yourself with little things like what well, kind of life is that we're talking about embarrassment it's like cliches are embarrassing or little or being again vulnerable enough to need advice i bet if you give tom cruise or tom hanks the, the examples we had earlier advice yeah i bet they would be like thrilled you if know if it I was mean? something they had heard good, before if it was good they would be over the moon. That's what I'm saying. To discover some and shit. That, Absolutely. Look, not to put myself in that company, but Santino, Berbiglia. Yeah. When we learn something, we share it with each other. That's and there's great. no like, what is what you, you think I need that? Right. I swear to God, dude, yeah. that my whole life I would give my dad a gift and, Duh. He'd, and he'd go, ah, <laughs> oh, just exactly what I wanted. Like, like fucking with us. Yeah. Because I swear, and I love my dad, I'm just saying, like, no one taught him how to receive Hilarious. a gift. And he thinks, I, I, I can't confirm this, I swear he thinks that if you give him something, he takes it as, like, an affront. Like, you think I need this and I couldn't buy it for myself? Uh, but that attitude can be rough. Yeah, You need to be vulnerable enough it's like both, the paradox of also, vulnerability and confidence. It also gave you the awareness that people are different. That's right. You know what I mean? <laughs> like true. not everybody sees the world the exact same way. That's you know? true. And people behave differently. It doesn't make them bad necessarily. It's That's just right. Their perspective or their sense of humor. Like That's it might funny. not. He might have been before his time. You That's know what That's I'm true. <laughs> My dad also says. Doesn't make me a bad person. He said that's his other <laughs> little great. catchphrase. Yeah, you know? no, no, he's he's taught me a lot. Yeah. I'm not just saying that. Um, we usually talk about the meaning of life. You talked a little bit about church growing up. Mm -hmm. Just so we don't go forever, not too long and take too much of your time. Where where are you at now? Do you have any thought system, spirituality? Yeah. I mean, I'm very open to, you know, anybody's opinions on a lot of things, basically. Like I dismiss the you know toxicity or negative or evil or anything like that anybody that's on the light side and the love side of things yeah i want to hear i'm in highly intrigued you know what i mean i'm right. like intrigued just by the even the origin of language like i just it's hard for me to process like yeah. 
these different cultures and societies speaking in a way that they completely understand each other. You right. know what I mean? And I have no idea what they're saying. That's right. At all. And I, it's just mind-boggling. I took a class in college that was about that, and I just met one of those 12-year-old girls that I told you about. One of yeah. them spoke German. Yeah. And I was like, English came from German. Yes. Proto-Indo-Germanic. If I you listen to it, it's like broken English. Right, yeah. exactly. And I was like, I say that as if I understand it. I don't. It's yeah. fucking crazy. It's like a living bacteria spreading mm -hmm. across the planet that mutates and changes and even and the concept of time in one lifetime when you're reading about these things it's hard to gauge totally how much time that had to take that's right to you need to be floating over the planet in society yeah and watch it visually or you something. know what i mean yeah. so like just that awareness of how big the world is and like what a tiny aspect in comparison to the universe is concerned is right. kind of like that you are where I'm at you know what I mean and I'm happy with you know my mentality that I do like nice things I like to hustle and work for the things that I have and shit like that or whatever but at the same time my heart goes out to the struggle and like those are struggling and I'm never detached enough to know that you know even though like my life might be straight or whatever it's not necessarily like that for everybody. I can't, right. I'm just not right. just up in the clouds. But that's the like gratitude that. too. Yeah. So you're having some zoom out, meaning like even language is a miracle. Mm -hmm. So that's wonderful. Yeah. Not that you need me to tell you that. I'm just saying I think it's wonderful. <laughs> and also some gratitude and some humility. Mm -hmm. It's funny, Richard Rohr, this Franciscan that I love, he goes, all you need to know God is patience and humility. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing both of those things. I think it's beautiful. It's beautiful, man. And life can be beautiful. I know life can be shit. I know life can be violent or traumatic or yeah. whatever but there are things that make it worth living or make it worth trying to fight for to get to those places That's where right. you know the traumatics moments are you know diminished and you know the better moments are you know heightened or whatever that's right and yeah, that's what we strive for, especially fighting for, you know, your kids' sake type thing. Yeah. Like, I get worried when it's too hot. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, are we destroying our planet way too fast? Like, we definitely are. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, this is starting to feel like this shit might be over in a couple of years. You right, know what I'm saying? Right, like, right, right. Can we do something about that kind right, of shit? Right, right. So. Like a symptom. Yeah. Like, let's not, like, like don't panic. But right. Also, you are Recognize. coughing up blood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe go to the doctor. Yeah, yeah. And Check, do what they out. say. I please. I look at the planet like a body all the time, and our attitude. I think a lot of it is just existential dread. We're like, we die, mm -hmm. so what's the point? That's mm -hmm. one of the easiest ways to get into. That's the sound of depression. Well, it's not going to happen in my lifetime, right? Yeah. And then you're like, well, the planet's going to die, but so am I. Right. So what's the difference? So let's chop down the rainforest and you know have a little bit more beef yeah. or whatever. You know what I mean? And I'm like. We need to learn to love ourselves yes. and each other. It goes like this, yourself, each other, then the planet. You know what I mean? Like, But to love anything, you sort of have to love everything. And we're not really being taught how to love. And, and it almost can seem vain or something to love yeah, yourself. Yeah, because, you know, societal pressures or whatever is just very competitive. And once you add the competitive aspect to it, as opposed to the communal aspect. That's right that's when things start to go awry. But, you know, it's so embedded in the culture with, you know, sports or who's going to get the girl at the dance I agree. or whatever. The sports, I'm not anti-sports. It's anti -sports. almost lame to, like, yes. be the one that loves everything. You know what I mean? Or whatever. We've been talking about this a lot, but even in the action movie, I love Top Gun, and the message of Top Gun is go it alone. Yeah. Except at the very last minute when you need a little bit of help. Yeah. And go to, and I love... I, I'm using these examples because you and I both love T. Cruz. Love him. Mission Impossible is the same. Yep. Ethan Hunt is going to go alone until yep. the very last minute when someone's about to kill him and someone else is going to shoot him. Some version of that. Yep. But that is also what we're doing. It's like you can see it in climate change. Denial is like it'll be fine at the last second someone's going to shoot the bad guy for right. us. And it's like. I don't know if it's going to work like that. I don't think it is. You know. But it's, they didn't make it up. Yeah. Is what I'm saying. And yeah. I'm not going to go so far as say we're all victims, but there is, there's a story being told that you didn't make up. Mm -hmm. So when you meet somebody that's like, no, chop it down, kill the a billion pigs a minute mm -hmm. uh, so I can have the McRib, mm -hmm. <laughs> whatever. Yeah. To pick, pick your issue or oil or I'm going to fly private planes and all, whatever it is. 
it isn't coming from nowhere. It's not coming from a heart of blackness. It's actually being informed by our culture and our stories. Yeah. We we live in a country that's constantly starting wars and and constantly fighting and murdering. Yeah. It's like bad parents that tell us not to murder each other. Yeah. And then we're going off and you don't even call that murder. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm just tr I'm not trying to get, give anybody a pass. I'm just saying we are swimming in a certain type of water mm -hmm. and it changes and informs everything. Every lens we look through is that water. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to say nobody's evil. Just certain people are, you could say, mentally ill or being deluded by American corporations, American violence, American war. It's, it's yeah, all I mean, there. it's hard to imagine being born with hatred. You know what I mean? That's, like, there are some shit kids, yes, but, <laughs> you know, I, most you want to assume that a baby is innocent. You know what I mean? Well, because it's, it, it is. I would go so far, I, I, I won't use an example, but like you take a, a troubled person, a bad person who keeps stealing, yeah. just to keep it nice and simple. If you took that person and resourced them, it might be medication, it mm -hmm. might be therapy, it might be embodiment. We might be talking about a weighted blanket. We might talk yeah. about exercise. We might talk about a diet change. We might talk about massage, uh, whatever, and really resource them and get them down, slow them down, calm them down. At their base level, they are Enya. And I've said this before. No one at their base level is Megadeth. But we think they are. We think those are the bad guys. Take the Megadeth person, the person who's so tense, they're shaking, they're gonna, they're dangerous. Yeah. Bring them all the way down. Everyone at their core is the same. 1,000%. You know, it brings me to one of your favorite jokes of mine. <laughs> I'm not afraid of anybody because everybody sleeps. Oh. <laughs> you said my favorite jokes of yours. I yeah. was like, you mean your favorite, favorite joke of mine? My favorite joke of yours, yes. yes. Everybody sleeps. And who are you when you're asleep? You're just, just pure awareness. Just cuddled up. That's right. Just imagine the biggest bully just yes. under the covers. Oh, I'm touched that you even know this joke. Just dusting his feet off yep. before he gets in the covers. Turning the pillow over because it's cooler <laughs> on the other side. Little baby. Brilliant. Little baby man. Yeah, that's yeah. the kind of thinking that I think, you know, an audience, you know, should be grateful for when they see a comic like that because you're shining a light on, you know, the things that is easy to not think about that's because right. we're stuck going to work or we're in traffic or right. we want to hear our favorite song on the radio or... You're just distracted by life kind of thing. I appreciate and that, And when you can slow it all down and be like, hey, do you ever think about this? Right, right. And he, not <laughs> so only, good. here's a technique that'll make you a little less afraid. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like everybody's hungry or everybody gets scared. Everybody yeah, gets it's anxious. It's like, hey, we're all hungry. I just discovered oysters. Right. So if you want to eat these things, we'll survive. But you got to got to do it. <laughs> Everything you want is on the other side of something you don't. You know? And in this case, it's these oysters. Yeah. Sorry. The first guy to like convince people of that. <laughs> right. Is a G. Absolutely. And then was like, this could is have been fine dining. Yeah. This is fine dining. Yeah. One, you wait, just wait. This will be fine dining. It was a lot of um, <laughs> lobster too. Was a, I don't know if yeah. you can call it a peasant food, but it was like a poor it person was. food. Yeah. Like, uh, and pork belly, of course. Yeah. All these things that are now. Uh, just cuisine. The creme de la creme. Yeah. I, I want to say pate, if you will. I'm like sure. Goose all liver, that stuff. duck liver. You're gonna whatever. make a you're gonna overfeed a goose till it explodes. You're telling me that, <laughs> that was going to the rich guys? The Rockefellers didn't know that. That was also, the help. It's terrible, it literally, but it is like the yeah. funniest visual yeah. to try to get something to uh, what? What are you doing? <laughs> it's funny and it's terrible. Yeah. Uh <laughs> I'm only worried if I'm allowed to say the help. <laughs> yeah. I it was think a good okay. movie. Think, what are you going to Yeah, it was a good movie. Exactly. Um, will you, in closing, tell... Oh, God. I could talk to you forever. I'm so tired. I'm, I'm really this loving This is part this. one. This is part one. We'll do it again. Um, one, I just want to compliment... Uh, let me see it again. Can we... I mean, we don't even have to talk about it. It just made me happy <laughs> you see it to again. tell you. My Thank Val you. and I go... Do it to me again. <laughs> it's you. It's him and Maya Rudolph doing this very... Oh. You and Maya are similar people. Thank you. And that she silliness. She is the greatest. She is the greatest. She is the greatest. She's one of the most talented people I've ever seen, but also 
just a beautiful soul. I, I completely agree. Just a beautiful, and loves to laugh. That's, I think, the infectious we, part about it. Like, that whole pocket of sisters I have when I first came in, Yeah, they love to laugh. Yeah. Like, love it. Yeah. And they you can are tell, they're fans. trying to find it. Yes. Big and time. we're back to what, dude, this, this conversation is what I needed. Yeah. Like, don't forget the fandom, the finding what you like. It's very Rick Rubin. It's yeah. like your taste. Get in touch with it. Find what you actually like yep. instead of what you think you're supposed to like or what might make money or this yeah. or that. No, do it's the thing. It's okay to like what you like. Yeah. It's totally fine. In fact, you're doing a service to society and to culture by getting in touch with what, what you honestly like. Like yes. Tim Burton. I was I was just watching something about Batman and how Batman Returns was kind of a flop. And mm -hmm. it's because they gave him more control. Yeah, sure. But he did it. And he has an aesthetic that, like, if the Pictionary or or the Draw Something Clue was Tim Burton, I could get you to guess it in two, two like, three sketches. For sure. That's a special thing. Yeah. That's Very a special, special thing. They think Batman, like, with Christopher Walken was a flop? And Michelle? Yeah. Really? Because the first one was huge. And the then the second one, one was, was very huge. dark. Remember the penguin bites a guy's nose? Yeah. Michelle Pfeiffer gets pushed out a window. But it is a classic. I mean, you and I know. But right. tell that to McDonald's that sponsored it. Got it. And put out Happy Meals. Got it. And then parents were like, fuck you, this is a dark movie. Got it. Yeah. That's wild. People were pissed. And that's why he didn't, didn't direct the third one. Right. And then the third one was Clooney, I think. Yes, it was. And they dropped Tim Burton, and that's and why it was horrible. Awful. Horrible. It is crazy. And then the next one was Batman and Robin, which made us all forget Batman Forever. Right. And Batman Forever was terrible, but it gets a pass because Batman and Robin was so much worse. <laughs> So good. It is so good. That shit just kept spiraling until Christopher Nolan. I know. Shout out to Nolan. Came but and shout saved out to us. Tim Burton too, man. And shout out to Michael Keaton. And shout out to why we're striking, which is what Artists for <laughs> Artists is about, my production company. Yeah. And you know, it's about artists having, you know, a piece of yeah. an IP as for the duration of the IP, that's only fair. Oh, I didn't like, know. Like it's that. not that's fair great. that Michael Keaton doesn't profit in any sort of way from Beetlejuice because Wow. There would be no Beetlejuice if it wasn't for Michael Keaton. You know what Tim Burton told him character description-wise? What? He was like, this character is based on the charcoal man. In, like, Brazilian culture, there's a guy called the charcoal man that can go out, in and out of dimensions. That's all he gave him. And Michael Keaton created Beetlejuice? Thank you. And what do you mean he doesn't make any money? He doesn't get residuals he on got Beetlejuice? Paid. I mean, he got maybe. I mean, but it was yeah. 40 years ago. But, but he it doesn't get, like, like, merch. He doesn't right, get, like, anything right. from the Broadway show. Or the, the cartoon. You know what I mean? And the merch cartoon. from the Broadway show. Like, yeah. they're kidding. They yeah. The, the cereal. Someone the cartoon, is going on stage and doing an impression of Michael Keaton, and Michael Keaton just cut to him in the crowd being like. Yeah. Not getting a piece of none of that. It's but, crazy. You know, we're all in the mentality to, but like, I can't keep sing working happy and birthday. everything. But, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Without paying a dude. Exactly. That's it's crazy. wild. So yeah, we're we're fighting that good fight, but more people can have the mentality to help that fight as well, not just you know striking. Like you can have a company like that a twenty four is a piece. Yeah, a twenty four said yes to all the demands. Yep, demands. You know what I mean? All the desires. I don't yeah. know what to say. Whatever it is, pro strike. You know what I mean? So yeah, um, it's it's an interesting existence, but I didn't it's know to that. be lived. What is your production company again? It's artist for artist? artist for artist, yeah. Is that a number four or is it F O R? It is F O R. Because I'm going to be emailing A F A yeah. Keenan at artists F O R artists dot com and just see if it works. It'll something like that'll work. I think. <laughs> Try a few different variations. <laughs> <laughs> something something will work. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, there's a lot it. of those. Just Somebody told me it. about emailing Spielberg. They just guessed Spielberg's. Yeah. I don't think he replies. No. I mean, but I'm sure he he saw a few of them probably. He got a few. He got a few. He can't open that script though. Everyone needs to know. No one can read or even hear I don't your think idea. People it's not know. appropriate. I don't think people know. It's, it's not also not legal. It's for not us. legal. That's what I mean. But if I, I came up to you and was like, like "Can I have a movie for you?" Sending yeah. me like, I got a great sketch idea, and I'm like. You can't. Great, but I can't read it, unfortunately. You even emailing me. I've had people accuse people of stealing it, yeah. and, I, and the person didn't even open it. Yep. But because they sent it, because they were they like, sent it. I can prove that I sent it to you. Yep. And it's like, this is, don't, so don't do it. I just had some very don't good- Don't do it. And like, weirdly, like SNL, like, I don't know if it was last year or the year before, but there was like a, a few, 
like sketches that were just identical. And I think one of them might have been a, a rip or something like that. But there was a, a couple that were similar very much to something else somewhere else, like on YouTube or something or whatever. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I know that, you know, it happens like great minds or whatever kind of thing. But like one of them was like suspicious, but it was just weird that it like a, it happened a couple times. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is like maybe we're all kind of sourcing from the same material and nobody's being individualistic enough or whatever right. but you know it's weird when that stuff happens and you want to hold that you know it's not just from you know an actual full well, rip like, off but, this is like the insurance thing yeah. people ruined it some people did do that right and now i it depends on who the person is and and you know the reputation and the work but like if you were accused yeah like this stole it would have to be like well look look at all the other stuff he's never you know? done it right you do kind of need that precedent you do because it's like stealing people steal things yeah. it's just like no everybody's just similar minded like i'm super very... mario brothers movie came out so we're all doing sketches on it basically you know yeah. what i mean that kind of shit. i think there was an snl sketch that was similar to one of the batman sketches we did and at no point did i go oh, they stole that they yeah. stole that yeah you know why yeah you know what it is? A lot of it is just first to market. Like, mm -hmm. I feel so grateful that we made the Batman sketches because <coughs> we did one. The first one we did was, you know, every time they turn their back, Batman runs away. And I'm like, what if you catch him? Right. And there are other videos I've seen them because YouTube right. suggests them to me. Yeah. And I watch them and it's someone doing the same gag. And at no point do I go, they stole that. I'm like, give no, me that's a, the a hundred comedians and go yeah. find the joke. Exactly. All 100 would say, what if they turned and saw him? Right. I was just the first. I don't even know if I was the first. I'm assuming right. I was one of the first right. that was like, what if they caught him? Yeah. Comedy has a certain It just, that's voice. where the bullseye is, yeah. That's right. And yeah. that's where the bullseye is. And if two people hit the bullseye, you're going to hit the same bullseye. Right. And then sometimes people are thieves. I mean, it's both. <laughs> it, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, but balance. Balance. Yeah, that's the, that's, that's the whole theme. Nobody wants to steal. No. Nobody wants to get, steal and get called out on it. That's right. You know what I mean? Like, Carlos Mencia Didn't is, want that. is where. Didn't want it. I don't think so. No. I think he wanted to do well. Right. Had well, you a know sense how of you humor. Know? It's also, look, who cares? He did a bit that was a Cosby bit. Mm -hmm. And the story I heard was people told him, and he was like, it's different. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that actually, and I don't know, Carlos, I'm not trying to start some shit. I'm just yeah. saying the issue is almost always ego. It's like you just, wh who's doing it? It's the By biggest, far. the biggest people, the most powerful people. If you have hundreds of thousands of people cheering and screaming and loving everything you say, yeah. that's the space. And it's not a safe space or a natural space. It's the ring of power. But it's a protected space. Yeah. And you can be up in that little, you know, command console little area that's protected and everybody be in that bubble that's right you know what i mean until right. you realize the rest of the spaceship has you know evaporated that's right and it's just that little bubble and it's the dangerous bubble people are intended dangerous. to have that amount of influence and power and money and all that stuff but if you remove the ego you can easily give credit to and be like well my thought on this was this and right. continue the thought process that's of right. that same joke but the part of me that empathizes with that is i'm like we don't know People do dumb, bad things. They make bad decisions. Yeah. When someone's handing you your favorite drink at your favorite temperature and they mm -hmm. won't look you in the eye as per your orders or mm -hmm. whatever it is. I'm not saying Mencia mm -hmm. did that. I'm just saying it's power corrupts. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not a pass. I mean, I'm just saying I, I, I empathize. It's a good kind of existence when those things are happening for you. It's nice to have a butler. You know what I mean? But you don't have to treat the butler like shit. And it doesn't mean you get to steal people's jokes. At all. But I get why if all you have are framed paintings of you mm -hmm. and you're drinking a drink, you'd be like, I did the Cosby bit a little bit different. You know it, what I mean? It's different. That's where mistakes like that get made. <laughs> yep. You got to watch the movie Blackberry. I really liked it. It A lot of what, did you watch it? It's It's what we're talking about. Yeah. You get to a point where you're that successful and that powerful, it always eats itself. And it's really interesting. That, that Blackberry, Blockbuster, all those things. That's it. You know what I mean? All the BL. Hey, mm -hmm. Nope, that's it. Just BL. Just BL. <laughs> <laughs> Even the BLT has seen better days. In the in the 80s and 90s, people love. There BLTs. was something special about the separation to keep it fresh and cold. It didn't work because it's still in the same container. So that shit got... <laughs> 
just as steamy. <laughs> but the attempt is we, what we, we respect. Pre- it. Yeah, we Absolutely. Respect it. Here's the last question. Can you tell me a time in your life? We're talking about laughing and, and Maya laughing. And Am I talking laughing. about the McDLT? I think I'm talking about the McDLT. That's what I'm talking about. I knew what you meant. Yeah. I think we all knew you meant the McDLT. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you tell me the time in your life that you laughed harder than you've ever laughed in your life? Or barring that, a time when you laughed, tears down your face, and you hurt your laughing so hard. <laughs> Sitting on this couch is like anytime there's something new and exciting, like the tears start flowing, and that's when I'm like really enjoying it. Yeah, like it's like, oh my god, that was so funny in Vegas. We just pulled off without my buddy being in the back seat, and I could have <laughs> sworn he was. I could have sworn he was there. He's fucking calling my phone. I'm holding my phone, like showing him, like yo, your pocket dialing me or whatever. He was not. <laughs> he was not back there. And I look, I'm like, oh shit, he's not there. Answer the phone. Yo, you guys left me. Fucking you, hilarious. You were so sure he was there. It's like because your pocket dial. Like- it was like the third time getting in the car for that day or something. So everybody just gets their seat and we're all in there. You know, we're adults, basically. Yes. You know, we're yes. leaving. So everybody gets in the car. Unreal. It's really a compliment. Yes. You're saying to him, you know how to get in the car. Of course. Like, you know how to put your seatbelt on, big, big guy. Champ. Come on, champ. <laughs> I love but, that. Yeah, it happens, you know, often, and I really appreciate it when it does. Like, I love a good, solid laugh. But growing up, it was always a lot of fun to catch, you know, the giggles in church or where it's not supposed to be always. happening. You know always. what I mean? It was just so good. And then I remember, I'm, I think I might have gotten sun poison or something because <laughs> me and my buddy, were like, we performed this play in, like, Seville, Spain in the summertime, and it was, like, outdoors or whatever. And we were out there for like some hours. And then when we got back on the bus, me and my one, we weren't even all that close, but all of a sudden we just connected on this one thing and just had this laughing fit that was so intense. He was laughing so hard. I was like laughing at the fact that he was laughing so hard. (laughs) And it just kept going back and forth like that. And it was insane because like, he had other friends in the in the play group. Like yes, I had yes, like maybe one yes. friend or something, but all of a sudden we were just like connected in this moment and we just thought maybe we got, you know, sun toxified or something because Hilarious. I don't even remember what we were laughing at, but it wasn't that funny. That just happened to me with, with see, I love <laughs> I love going to kids' birthday parties. I yeah. never got to. Now I have a kid. Now I go to kids' birthday parties. They're so fun. Yeah. All these little kids, and they're so present and so open. There's this little kid three little kids, but one of them in particular, I was just doing bits for him. Yeah. And before I knew it, silly stuff. Yeah. Me and this kid just started, little kid, just started laughing that we were laughing. Right. It was heaven on earth. I saw yes. him this morning when I dropped Leah at camp. I was do like, I, hey, remember when we laughed? And he was like, do I ever? Do I ever? It was joy. And afterwards, this is self-serving, but the parents were like, you're so nice to play with him. I'm like, I just did ecstasy you know what basically, I mean? like, like, I basically you don't know did. that your kid is special yeah. for playing with me and that's right giving me that kind of like that's right joy of life. i just showed up yeah i was oh so good so just be open folks be open that's folks what, yeah be open. be open that's my Chappelle. yeah hey. hey be open man <laughs> he doesn't talk like that anymore he used to now it's easier now it's very this is the fucking way of this and it's very grovelly. It is. Yeah. <laughs> I love that you went with yeah. this is the fucking way. For eight minutes. Yeah. It's very like that was it. There's a problem. Yeah. There's a problem in the world when you think these motherfuckers are doing this and they're not that at all. Oh he's the best. My God. But yeah, it is it's just, we're getting grizzly Chappelle these days. We are. Yeah. It's my favorite. My favorite love, special of his is the- I love it so much because this motherfucker will sell out Radio City Music Hall, tell four minutes of jokes, and then preach for two hours. Yep. Yep. And I, I'm like, that is a man, that is a prophet right That's there right. that we're listening it's to. It's somebody that gets it. Because you're on stage, everyone's listening, what are you going to say? And he's, the, he's literally the only one that's like, I'm just going to- I'm going to try to preach. change society every night, basically. Right. Kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Crazy. Ew. Um, That's it. Would you say keep it crispy? It's just how we end. The guest says the catchphrase. How did I not notice the- keep it crispy <laughs> over my shoulder this whole time? The whole It's in your shot, too. Well, <laughs> keep it crispy, folks. This has been part one. Part two, 
We only talk about Fat Albert. Yeah. <laughs> That was Incredible. awesome. Thank, that you. Was, uh, thank you, man. You make me, you make me.